It's time for the excitement of NCAA Division II football, featuring the Shepherd University Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's play-by-play coverage is being brought to you by Hagerstown Ford. We deliver to your home. Ford of Hagerstown.com. Panhandle Dumpsters, because you have a choice. PanhandleDumpsters.com. The Marius Group. Start planning for a brilliant future. The Joe Ferretti Law Office in downtown Martinsburg, delivering first-rate service and results for our clients. Green Tree Realty, a great place to call home. Jackie Lewis Broker. GreenTreeRealty.com. Mike Folk for Governor. Accountable, ethical, responsible. Folk for WV.com. And by Smallwood and Small, an Erie affiliate. Total Insurance Solutions. Standing by is our TV10 broadcast team. So let's head to the field and get today's pregame show underway. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everyone, and welcome in to Tulio Field at Saxon Stadium. We are in Erie, Pennsylvania, on the campus of Mercyhurst University, where today it's a Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference matchup as the Mercyhurst Lakers play on uh, their home field against your Shepherd University Rams. For TV10 Sports, I'm Matt Miller. By my side is Matt Crawford. We've got Caleb Falero engineering back at the studio. Thanks to uh, cameramen today, John Alderton and Eric Sterick. Matt, here we go. Week two of the season and a little different feel for each of these teams coming into this matchup as the Shepherd Rams dropped a heartbreaker last week as they open the season at home against Ohio Dominican. Meanwhile, Mercyhurst coming in after a very close victory over Lake Erie in their opener. Yeah, looking forward to this one. I think Shepard uh, definitely had the tougher first week opponent. Not saying uh, Lake Erie College isn't a good opponent, but I think Ohio Dominican definitely that stronger opponent. I think you maybe saw a little bit more what Shepard is about rather than what Mercyhurst fans may have seen from their team last week. Shepard, very eager to get back out on the field. It was a angry week of practice I guess maybe the best way to put it talking to coaches players throughout the week going down and getting our pregame interviews and stuff on Thursdays you could tell there was a anger there was a just sense of wanting to get back on a football field more than anything put last week behind them and get ready for the Lakers today so I expect the Rams to come out ready to play football today and play a whole complete four quarters of football well you look at how that game played out last week and Shepard had the game no doubt about it they win in all of the statistical categories as they ran for 101 yards they threw for 358 that's 459 total yards they were 50 percent on third down conversion six of 12 They did all of those things right. The issue was four turnovers, and those four turnovers were costly as Ohio Dominican scored what proved to be the game-winning touchdown with just a minute and seven left on the clock, and the final score was 24-21 as ODU got the victory. Shepard feeling like they let one get away. Yeah, and absolutely, and I think as somebody who watched the game as a fan, as we were able to call the game last week, They did let that one slip away. They won in every category you want to win in and lost in the two that you don't want to lose in and that tend to really tell you what the results were. Number one is the scoreboard. That's obviously going to tell you who won or lost, but the turnover battle. Shepard, some turnovers in the game, and it wasn't just the fact that they turned the ball over. It was when and where they turned the ball over. I don't think you could have asked for more untimely turnovers than what they had last week. Yeah, one of those going into the end zone, and two plays later, Ohio Dominican scored, and that's a 14-point turnaround, and of course, late in the game, a turnover in their own end that ultimately led to that game-winning touchdown drive. For Mercyhurst, a tight ball game really throughout against Lake Erie. When you look at the numbers, it was Mercyhurst with 338 total yards to 316 for the Storm. Uh, Penalties certainly were big as Lake Erie committed 12 penalties for 111 yards. You look at how that game played out. It was nip and tuck, which certainly should have this Mercyhurst team ready and prepared for the type of game they'll see today. You would hope so. First PSAC game for each one of these teams this year and the first Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference game 
for the Shepherd Rams. Matt, we're here to witness history today. Absolutely we are. Now, we do note this is not a division game, so when you look at the standings, this is not really going to affect either one of these teams in that regard as Mercyhurst is in the West, and they were a preseason number four pick in the PSAC West. The Shepherd Rams were a preseason number two pick in the East, so it is a very big game from that perspective. And when you look at the PSAC West, that is a that's the stronger half of the PSAC, I think. You look at Slippery Rock, Cal UP, IUP, those are year-in, year-out playoff teams, or at least playoff contention teams. So for Mercyhurst to be number four, right outside of those very powerful, dominant top three, I think says a lot about this program and what the coaches thought that this program is going to do this year. And you can say the same about Shepard, the first year in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference and picked to finish behind Westchester at a very good year last year. I think both of these teams have a lot of promise this year, and uh, people around the league are noticing that both of these teams have a very big upside. Certainly it is a great day for college football. We've got the sun shining. Our game time temperature expected to be in the low to mid-70s. The only thing to keep an eye on, we don't feel it, obviously, where we are in the press box, no doubt. John Alderton feels it up top manning that camera. But when you look at the trees around this campus, a beautiful setup, by the way, here at Mercyhurst, you can really see a strong wind that looks to be blowing across the field, which certainly will affect kicks and maybe could even affect passing. And kicking last week for Hayden August Scrivens, while he was successful in the game for the most part, uh, there were kicks that uh, looked a little wobbly coming off that leg. So uh, hopefully he's had a, a week to uh, work on that a little bit more, and we'll see how the kicking game's affected today. The pregame show is being brought to you by Brown Funeral Homes in Martinsburg, Inwood, Charlestown, Ranson, Robert Fields and Sons, a family-owned full-service funeral home proudly serving the area since 1880. We need to take our first break, but when we come back, we'll go in the locker room as we hear from Shepherd head coach Ernie McCook. This is Shepherd Ram Football on TV10. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price. And we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it. Period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Welcome back into the Brown Funeral Home pregame show. It's time to go in the locker room with Shepherd football head coach Ernie McCook. This conversation brought to you by Parsons Ford on Shepherdstown Road in Martinsburg and ParsonsFordofMartinsburg.com. They became number one by making you number one first, Parsons. A coach obviously eager to get back out on the field after last week. After you've looked at the film and everything, just what was it about last week that you guys couldn't execute late in the game? Well, it was just the crucial errors we made at, a, at the wrong time. Uh, the turnovers in the second half and in the fourth quarter, it's hard to overcome that. Uh, we had four turnovers to their none, uh, and I think that that was definitely the out difference in the football game. With that being said, you look at the overall stats and how the offense played as a whole, how the defense played in the whole, there's got to be a lot of upside and a lot of positives you took away from that game. There, there is a lot of tremendous upside and a lot of positives. Um, our guys have been focused on this next week. We put last week behind us. You know, We have a saying that we don't want to let last let the play before beat us in the next play or the last game beat us this week. So, you know, we, we learned from our errors. Uh, we were very encouraged by a lot of play that we saw out there on Saturday against a really good football team in Ohio Dominican. Uh, but, you know, we've got to be able to take care of the football. The two stats that we didn't win, 
or the turnover margin and the um, scoreboard. So those are two things that, you know, obviously we've got to be able to take care of, and in crucial times we have to be able to do the right thing. A couple of those turnovers were Ty Hebron. Do you look at that as a case where you just need to get him more touches to make sure he is as comfortable as possible, or is that a case where you go, we got to fix this before we get you back on the field? He's back on the field, and if he had another series, he would have been back on the field. That was just two unfortunate plays for him late in the ball game. Uh, we have a lot of confidence in Ty that he's going to make a lot of plays for us all year long, and he's going to be a tremendous contributor to this football team. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it happened. Uh, we don't like that. Uh, obviously, we don't like that. But we feel that Ty is a great effort guy, and he's in the, in the long run, he's going to be just fine. First road game of the season. Talk about the difference it is, other than location-wise, obviously. But uh, what is different about going on the road rather than being at home practice-wise? Well, it's probably less distractions. Uh, you know, you know, have, being on campus and things like that. It's, so it's going to be nice, you know, for us once we get on that bus tomorrow afternoon and. Uh, we're heading up there, and we're going to be focused on playing Mercyhurst as we are now, but our kids won't have any distractions. We have a great uh, process to how we handle travel, and I think it's going to help us be successful on Saturday. You mentioned Mercyhurst. What do you see in the Lakers this year? Very physical, well-coached football team. They're going to be good in all three phases, football, uh, offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, they're going to try and take it, you know, get after it with the run game, take some shots down the field. Uh, offense, defensively, they're really a zone pressure team, like to bring pressure. So we've got to be able to handle their pressure um, and uh, you know, be able to do those things to be successful. We've got to be sound fundamentally and football-wise, and we've just got to do what we're coached to do. There's our Inside the Locker Room segment with Shepherd head coach Arnie McCook, brought to you by Parsons Ford on Shepherdstown Pike in Martinsburg, or visit ParsonsFordOfMartinsburg.com. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. We'll be back with more of the Brown Funeral Home pregame show next. This is Shepherd Ram Football on TV 10. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. We welcome you back into the Brown Funeral Homes pregame show. Time to go between the hash marks as we talk with a pair of Ram players, and we're getting it started on the offensive side of the football with Rodney Dorsey, wide receiver. Yes, hey, great game last week for you. Seven catches, 89 yards, and a touchdown. Yes, Tell us about the experience. Oh, uh, actually, it's my that was my first game here at Ram Stadium. Uh, it was a great atmosphere. Love the atmosphere. Everyone made positive, even though what happened at the end of the game. So uh, it was just a great experience for my first game here. Take us to the touchdown play. How did that unfold? Uh, so what it was was a screenplay to me, and I had two great blocks on the outside. So what I did, I just found my way to the outside, read their blocks, cut up. Saw the safety was sprinting over full speed, so I, that gave me an option to just cut back on them, and then that's how I found the end zone. As good a game as you had, I know there's frustration that you didn't come out with a W. How does that loss drive this football team? Uh, I think it kind of sets us like where we are. Which is pretty much like execution. Like we have, you know, the plays, the players, and all that, the effort. We just have to make sure we finish and finish off for all four quarters. I look at the box score after the game and see 11 different players caught the football from Tyson Bajan. What's that say about the depth of your wide receiving core? We're really deep. Uh, our receiving core, everyone can play, everyone can catch. We all have speed, we have size. I mean, I'm not the biggest dude, but, you know, 
Our outside guys, we have more size out there. Inside, we're quick, so we really have big depth at the receiver. What does that depth do to maybe keep you fresh at the end of a game? Uh, for instance, uh, slot-wise, sub in and out, deep routes, uh, reverses, if we run running screen plays, you know, we can get guys in, subbed out quick. And like that, it's just, it gives more, you more break to get like your feet back under you and all that. As you prepare for this matchup against Mercyhurst, what do you see out of this offense facing what they do defensively? Uh, what we see is we just have to play our game. Um, you know, we're up in Mercyhurst, I know they're calling for rain, but even if it's raining, we can't let that dictate us. We just got to play our game. When you say play our game, what is that game? Just ram the ram way. <laughs> play together, you know, don't let distractions get to us, and just play our game finished. Rodney Dorsey, thank you so much. No Appreciate problem. it. Thank you. All right, we're going to talk next with, I believe, David Eppert, Ram linebacker. Stay tuned. We'll come back with more of our Brown Funeral Homes pregame show. We continue on the Brown Funeral Homes pregame show. This is not David Eppert, but rather this is Chris Lane, who we uh, are now speaking with. We thought we were talking with uh, David here earlier, but uh, Chris, you uh, led the team in tackles last week. Talk yes, to sir. us about that defensive effort against Ohio Dominican. Uh, we came up with a strong effort. We gave everything we had. We're going to keep pushing. We just got a few little minor mistakes that we got to learn on, and we got to capitalize on next time. You led the team with 10 and a half, 11 tackles. Talk to us about what you were seeing from your linebacker position. It's great D-line play. Our D-line was they was ferocious the whole game. They played they played just like all the coaches told them, told them to be, and we just went out there and we just played hard. You were able to really stymie a pretty good rushing attack last week. How'd you get that done? Uh, just playing ball. <laughs> D-line. It was a team effort. So we all came together. We, we said that was a one of our, that's one of our goals every week to stop the run, and we just really chimed in last week and we, we honed in on what we had to do. How much does that effort propel you into this game against a Mercyhurst team that likes to run the football as well? Uh, it gives us a lot of momentum. It's going to make us keep pushing forward and getting better, and we're going to try and do, if not, try to do the same thing, if not, do even more to it. What is it that you see in the Lakers? A real physical team. Mm -hmm. They're going to control the clock, and they're not going to get that ball up. We're going to have to try to take it. Talk to us about going on the road. Uh, what are you looking forward to and maybe this team kind of coming together on the road? Uh, it's going to be good to see this year, just to see us away from our home in a different environment, dealing with adversity. Uh, good team, good physical team coming in, well coached. So, yeah, we're going, we definitely, it's definitely a big test for us. Chris, hopefully you'll come back with a win. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right, there you go. Chris you. Lane joining us uh, as a part of our uh, Between the Hash Marks segment here on the Brown Funeral Homes pregame show. Stay tuned. We've got more coming up. It is Ram Football on TV10. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, Call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming and aviation and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time.
Pennsylvania, not too far, just a few blocks, as a matter of fact, from Lake Erie as we get ready for today's matchup with the Lakers entertaining your Shepherd University Rams. Along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller, Caleb Falero, our engineer at the studio, Eric Sterick and John Alderton running cameras and helping to produce on-site today's TV10 broadcast. Well, as we continue on the Browns Funeral Home pregame show, Matt, this is a new league for the Shepherd University. University Rams playing in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference and yet some familiarity with teams in this league all because of NCAA Division II playoff appearances and in fact only one time have these two programs met and it was right here but a much different December day back in 2010. Would you like to know a little bit about that game? Tell me more. Great game December 4th 2010 the quarterfinals of the NCAA Division II playoffs. You mentioned it a game right here at Mercyhurst. Some Lake of affect snow that day. That's always fun. A tight game through three quarters. Tied at 14 going into halftime. 21-14 was the score after three quarters of play. The Shepherd Rams scored 28 unanswered points in that fourth quarter uh, to win 49-14. Uh, for Shepherd, uh, Kevin Glancy, uh, 17 for 27, 245 yards through the air, but it was really the running game. And in the snow, you expect that to happen. It was a, a double-headed attack uh, similar to what Shepard's done uh, since 2010 and before 2010. Two running backs, a very good game. Tommy Addison, 15 carries, 137 yards, two touchdowns. And Nate Hoyt, 17 carries, 115 yards. He punched it in four times for the Rams. A great, great game. And they would go on to the national semifinals. They would go down to Delta State. And that game didn't go so well for the Rams. But still, the lone previous appearance for both of these teams against one another was a memorable one for the record books. And when you talk about record books, I mean, Shepard did their top ten games over the course of from 1999 to present day. That game's on the list. A phenomenal game for the Rams and I think both teams are hoping for another fantastic game like that today. That game was number nine on that list that you speak of heading into this season as the Shepherd Rams through the uh, website put together the list of top ten games, and that one came in at number nine. Interesting enough, the reason he came in at number nine is because really that was the game that with that victory marked a new level for Shepherd Ram football, getting to a national semifinal for the first time in program history, but it was only the start as the Rams would get back to a national semifinal and all the way to a national championship game in 2015, and again in 2016 would host a national semifinal as the Rams have continued to make very good runs into the Division II playoffs. It hasn't been the same for Mercyhurst. No, the last time Mercyhurst was in the playoffs was that game back in 2010, 2011, uh, just a four and seven year coming off uh, that very good 2010, 10 and three season. And they've not got to the playoffs. Their best season since then was 2012 when they went nine and two, but didn't make the playoffs that year. So tough to go nine and two, similar to what we saw in Ohio Dominican last week, talking about the same thing, a nine and two record last year, didn't get them into the playoffs, but it's been a struggle to get back to the postseason for this Laker team. And uh, they want to change that this year. Well, and off to a one and zero start, a win against the Rams today could certainly go a long way to helping them do that for the Shepherd Rams uh, getting back to the postseason they have to get the victory here today you don't want to start 0 and 2 as the Rams come in off that loss against Ohio Dominican last week well it's time for us to get into the keys to the game brought to you by Green Tree Realty in Shepherdstown let Jackie Lewis hand you the keys to your next home phone 304-876-3737 or stop by the office at 138 East German Street in Shepherdstown. All right, Matt, let's start with the visitors, the Shepherd Rams. What are keys for them in this one today? One thing that comes to mind when looking at this Mercyhurst team, they want to run the football. So for Shepherd, they're going to need to load that front seven. They're going to need to fill all the gaps, which they did very well against a good running team from Ohio Dominican last week. So they're going to need to fill those gaps. The front seven is going to have to be fantastic today. Key for them is going to be to stop this Mercyhurst ground attack. Well, no doubt about it. The Rams were strong against the run last week. Gave up just 2.7 yards a rush and just 56 total yards. Going to have to have that same effort today. And force Doug out 
Alta Villa to be the one to beat you. Look, this young man's a very good quarterback. He's only two passing yards away from becoming the all-time leading passer in Mercyhurst history, but only completed 41% of his passes last week. He's got to be the one to beat the Rams today. All right, let's turn the table. For Mercyhurst, is he the key? I think he's the key, and I think for them, being a running football team, they need to limit Shepard's time of possession and Shepard's overall number of drives in this game. They need to control the clock, control the tempo of the game, and keep Shepard's offense off the field as much as possible. They didn't have a great second half last week. This is a dynamic offense that can run the football very well with the two-headed attack of Deontay Glover and Ty Hebron and receivers all over the field, a good quarterback in Tyson Bajan. You know they have weapons. You know it's an explosive offense. So for Mercyhurst, they need to control the clock, control the field. There you go, keys to the game, brought to you by Green Tree Realty in Shepherdstown. Let Jackie Lewis hand you the keys to your next home. Find out more online at GreenTreeRealty.com. That wraps up our Browns Funeral Home pregame show. Browns Funeral Home in Inwood, Charlestown, Ranson, and Martinsburg. Robert Fields and Sons, a family-owned full-service funeral home. They have proudly served the area since 1880. One final time out, we come back with a look at the starting lineups. And today's opening kick, it is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and bulk pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, PanhandleDumpsters.com. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. I picked Shepherd University because I'm not just a number. One of the things that surprised me is how friendly everyone is. I like being able to walk down the street and have the professors recognize me by my name. I'm constantly learning. But it also has taught me so much about myself and about what I want to do with my future. The location at Shepherd is amazing. Cities like Washington, D.C., Baltimore are only about an hour, hour and a half away. You just got to see it. Once you see it, it just takes your heart. We welcome you back in to Saxon Stadium. It is Tulio Field at Saxon Stadium at the campus of Mercyhurst University. The marching band with our national anthem. And we are just about ready to go. The Shepherd Rams winning the coin toss, and they want the football. So we'll take a look at their offense and the Mercyhurst defense. Lineups brought to you by Panhandle Dumpsters, giving Berkeley County residents options. Get a free garbage can and service for only $23 a month. Local, family-owned. Learn more at Panhandle Dumpsters. Dot com. Offensively for the Rams, Eric Ostro and Joey Fisher are listed at tackles. Keandre Batson and Cole Weaver are the guards. Evan Ostro is the starting center. The tight end to start will be DJ Cornish. Wide receivers, Devin Phelps battling a little bit of an injury. He got nicked up a bit during practice this week. And Rodney Dorsey as well. The fullback is Michael McCook. The running back, Deontay Glover. And the quarterback is... Tyson Bajent. Let's look at the defense for Mercyhurst. They'll hit the field first with Jared Gregory and Uwala Omaragbe as the defensive ends. Aaron Thompson is a defensive tackle. Outside linebackers are Bradley Burroughs and Corbin Kessler, while Alex Zacharias is an inside linebacker along with Joseph Scro. The safeties are Jake Tarasovich and Dante Rodriguez. Rodriguez, while John 
Lacchiato is a corner along with Keith Brickman. So there you go. A quick look at the starters on the offense and defense as Shepard's offense gets the football first. Mercyhurst defense will be on the field first. Our lineup's brought to you by Panhandle Dumpsters. Hey, you can get a free garbage can and service for only $23 a month in Berkeley County. Find out more by calling 1-833-DUMP-STR. The green uniforms head to toe for Mercy Hurst along this near sideline just below our broadcast position. White helmets with that green M, a little black outline. And Matt, what is it you like about that football helmet? Man, I tell you what, right down the middle of the white helmet in green is a green chain to go to the back of the helmet where there's a old school looking green anchor. And as a guy who grew up on the water and loving boat, I think that is such a clean look, such a cool addition uh, to the helmet and a great way to bring uh, Lakers into it and get Lake Erie into your uniforms. I think those are very, very cool and unique helmets. You really have, I mean, other than Navy, I don't know if I've ever seen a college football helmet that's incorporated an anchor into it at all. So I think both these teams looking sharp today. Shepard's coming out in the road whites, the blue numbers, blue pants, and, of course, the matte blue helmets and the shiny gold ram horns on the side of those helmets. Brand new field turf surface here at Saxon Stadium. They recently had a big donation that was made to the university for their athletics programs. They have ice hockey here, so they're working on the ice rink, which is kind of behind us and to our left. They uh, redid the surface here on this field. Looks like a practice facility, some soccer fields and other things going on in behind us. So uh, some great things happening here at Mercyhurst University. Well, Brendan Cole is a 5'11", 100 an 80-pound redshirt senior puts the football on the tee at the 35 to our right. Back deep for the Rams. Devin Phelps and along that far side it looks like the freshman Jordan Washington. Kick is away and that is Washington along the far side. Hash mark. He's got it at the three-yard line. Works right up the middle of the field with a little cut to his left. Bounces off of a tackler and then gets taken down right around the 20-yard line. That is a great special teams tackle because if he's able to escape and get around the corner on the left side, he had some turf out in front of him. One thing I noticed about Jordan Washington there, he was one of the guys that struggled with a turnover in game one. It was a punt return late in the fourth quarter of that one. And you see him on that return, that ball is as high and tight as it could possibly be. To me, that means that receivers, running backs, defensive backs, practiced that an awful lot this week, and the coaches are going to be looking for it. Hunter Merritt was the special teamer who made that tackle. He's out there now as one of the safeties. Back to throw on first down. Bajan flush from the pocket, rolling near side, dumps it off to Deontay Glover. And Glover battling his way forward, fights out to that 27-yard line. And an eight-yard gain on a nice play by Tyson Bajan. Good play by Tyson moving the pocket to the near side of the field. One thing I noticed on that play was DJ Corner saw the rush and was looking back at Tyson Bajan just running an out pattern towards the sideline. And when he saw Tyson get in trouble and start to roll towards him, he turned up field where he had a defender on him. To me, you got to be a receiver right there if your quarterback's in trouble. Good job by Glover, however, making himself available. Here is the handoff to Deontay Glover. Nice move as he started left. Put on the brakes quickly, cut back to the right, and he'll have the first down as he gets beyond the 30 before being stood up there. Mark it close to the 31-yard line for a pickup of four. Good enough to move the chains there by Glover and probably would have been a first down regardless, but a good little hesitation move juking back into the middle of the field by Glover, gaining an extra probably a one or two yards on that one. Deontay Glover had 12 carries, 37 yards, and a touchdown in last week's opener splitting time with Ty Hebron. Glover behind the quarterback in that pistol formation. Bajan will now send one of his slot receivers in motion. That's Alex Wetzel, the tight end. Bajan wants to throw far side wide open. It is Wetzel. He's got it along the far side of the 40 in the midfield stripe. Takes on a tackler and goes down at about the 47-yard line in Mercy Hurst territory. There to make that stop was Jake Tarasovich. I did I just criticize DJ Corners in that first play, but that was a good job by him. Not necessarily blocking, making sure it wasn't going to be an illegal block in the back or a hold going upfield, but did a good job of just getting in the way 
And when you're worried about possibly getting a holding or a block in the back penalty, that's what you got to do. He threw his hands up and just became basically a 200-plus pound of blocking dummy that the defenders are going to have to move around. A good job by him and a good job by Wetzel. 22 yards on that pass completion sets up first down and 10 at the 47 of Mercyhurst back to the ground game. And Glover over the left side of the line will pick up just about three yards. So the Rams mixing it up every other play. They started with a pass, came back to the run, connected for that long pass that now sets up this short run and brings up a second down and seven. And we have an injury timeout. We've got a player, Aaron Thompson, a defensive lineman. He's a sophomore, goes six foot two eighty five, coming off the field. And now we'll have a brief timeout. Well, now they'll start that play clock again. Each team kind of heading towards their sideline as though a timeout had been taken. That was not the case. It was simply an injury situation. So from the 44 of Mercyhurst, fifth play of this opening possession, the Rams face a second and seven. Devin Phelps, the wide out here to the near side. Greg Leonard to the far side. Leonard comes in motion now to this near side, puts two receivers to the wide side. Handoff going to Glover, turning the corner on the left side, and not a lot of room as Bradley Burrows, a 6'2 sophomore linebacker, stepped up in the hole and made a very nice tackle, a gain of just one. And that's a good job adjusting by Mercyhurst in the last two runs. On the first run by Deontay Glover, you saw him do the juke back to the inside of the field and he's tried to do it the last two times start on the outside then come back in between the hash marks and Mercier has done a good job of filling those uh, cutback lanes maybe a little run option though that time for Bajent you keep an eye on that he gave the fake and then came around the end he might keep that one of these times Bajent wants to throw on third down and six flush from the pocket rolling near side looking downfield lets it go and a little too low right at the sticks the pass was intended for Sterling Dudney but he could not get that one off the top of his shoes and with the incompletion the punting unit comes on and it was a good job by Corbin Kessler in the secondary defending right there he knew where the sticks were and gave the, the receiver about up to two yards from the sticks. Wasn't going to uh, risk a pass interference penalty or over playing that football. He did just what he needed to do right there. Stayed where he needed to so he knew even if the receiver caught the ball, it wasn't going to be a first down. Noah Pohl on to punt it out of there. Average 38 and a half yards a kick last week with one inside the 20. He'll try to get this one inside the 20 as it bounces at the four, takes a sideways skip and out of bounds. And it looks like they'll spot it right on the three yard line. A 40 yard punt, no return. And Mercyhurst has a lot of field in front of them. Only 97 yards. That's not that much. Now, great punt by Pohl right there. You can tell there was some backspin on there just by the way. He let that football go, go in the way you could tell he took a little bit off of it, not trying to put it in the end zone. The wind going to be a factor today, and I think Shepard gets a check in the, uh, the good job section for that kick dealing with the wind. First down and 10 from deep in their own territory, the three-yard line, and it'll be an eye formation behind the starting quarterback. And that QB, Doug Altavilla, a red shirt senior, 6'1", 200 pounds, up under center, takes that snap, hands it off. The deep man met in the hole. Football's free. It's loose in the end zone. Let's see who's got it. Even if Mercyhurst gets it, it's a safety. Mercyhurst did get on that football, and it is a safety. Now the handoff went to, I believe, Armstrong as the fullback. Might have been 37. It may have been Schof who was out there as they had both players who are listed as fullbacks in that backfield trying to make something happen. That football got knocked free, and the Rams able to get two points out of it as it was recovered in the end zone by Mercyhurst. And now as I look down, Garrett Owens was out there as well. So I, I couldn't tell from our angle who got that carry, but they got met in the hole. It was Garrett Owens, by the way, who did get Thank that carry. You. Um, and he's their leading running back, a guy that last week ran the ball 30 times for 125 yards and two touchdowns. He's going to get the bulk of these carries, so an uncharacteristic mistake for him, but good job by Shepard pouncing on the football, just or pounce, trying to pounce on the football, making sure that Mercyhurst wasn't able to get it back in the field of play. And how about the big hit from Chris Lane, the Ram linebacker who we talked to in the pregame show was the leading tackler a week ago, ten and a half tackles last week. He starts this game with that big hit that forced the fumble. So Shepard has a two to nothing lead and it will be a free kick coming for Mercyhurst. 
making my key to the game look pretty good so far, filling the holes and making sure that front seven playing well. Looks like it will be a punt that will come from Brendan Cole. There is that punt from the 20-yard line. A floater coming to Devin Phelps. He's got it pretty much at the 30 to the 35, far side 40. Little cut back to the 45 and then gets taken down at about the 47-yard line. Thomas Zacharias, a 5'11 sophomore linebacker making that special teams tackle. So the Rams get the football for their second possession and now with a 2 to nothing lead, 11-11 to play in our opening quarter. We're only, only moving about six or seven yards back from where they punted the football. So not losing a whole lot of ground on the punt, a good defensive stand. Our defensive force to turnover, if you will, getting points, two points for the defense. From their own 47, Ram football, three receivers tightly bunched to the right side of the formation. Bajan will now have Hebron out there as the tailback. Bajan throwing far side, Phelps with the catch. He gets twisted out of bounds after a gain of just about six yards. Keith Brickman... Out there is a defensive back forcing Phelps out of bounds. Phelps, one of the top receivers last week for this Rams a team. Six catches, 89 yards, and a touchdown. Good to see Phelps back out there. You mentioned a little nicked up in practice this week. So good to see him involved early in this game. Gain of six will set up a second down and four. Bajan again wants to throw and wants it all. Deep down the middle, looking for Phelps over. Throws him in the pass. He is incomplete. Ends up with triple coverage on him by the time that ball comes down. Uh, John Lociato, the defensive back there. Hey, there was a little bit of contact going up the field. I think Devin Phelps wanted to flag as Phelps tried to cut back in. Uh, there was a little bit of contact by Lociato, but no call on that. I think it's a good no call. Both uh, players kind of bumping up against one another, but even if Phelps is able to stay on course, I still think Tyson probably overthrows that by a few yards. Big third and four for the Rams. Quick screen far side. Dylan Brewer with the catch. Battles his way forward, but will be short of what he needed for the first down. DJ Cornish, normally a tight end, was out there in a slot position, helping to block that gain. Good for two, and the Rams needed four, so the punting unit is on again. See if Pole can duplicate what he did on that first punt, pinning Mercyhurst back inside the five. Obviously not an easy task. The wind now picking up more than it was on that first punt blowing uh, behind him. So he's really got to be careful with this punt, not to get it too high in the air, just try to bounce it down inside that tent and see where it lands. That rugby-style punt as he actually punts the nose of the football, the point of it, it bounces at about the 17, goes sideways and out of bounds. Looked like it may have been touched as well by a Ram player. It'll be marked at the 13-yard line. Still a great punt. Yeah, two punts and two inside the 20 so far. Can't ask for much better than that. That punt covers 32 yards. And now Mercyhurst will have their second offensive possession again, pretty deep in their own territory with 9.56 to play in our opening quarter. 2 nothing, Shepard. Garrett Owens coming back out as the tailback yep. here, and he was the a fumbler in that first play of the game for Mercyhurst, first Alt offensive play of the game. Yep, Altavilla swings a pass out near side, grab made, and the wide receiver, Cortez Watson, listed on the roster as a running back, getting to the sideline, forced out at the 19 after a pickup of six. To set up this Mercyhurst offense a little bit, didn't have time with only one play in that first drive. This is, we mentioned in the pregame, a run-heavy team. Last year, 1,997 rushing yards to just 1,742 passing yards. So a team that runs about 200 yards more a game last year, or 200 yards more a season last year than they pass the ball. Very rare in college football. Pass in the flat on the right side, pulled in by Owens out of the backfield, and the tailback gets one yard out to that 20-yard line before being forced out there. The Ram linebacker, Jared Austin, a senior this year, battled that injury last year. They kept him out for the season, and uh, good to see him back. Made a nice play for a game of just one and it sets up third and three. Austin one of the four team captains today that is on a rotating basis a leadership council this year that has 15 players in it and Coach McCook said he's going to rotate those captains game by game. There is a handoff to the tailback Owens met in the hole picked up about two yards but nothing more as he got driven backwards in on that play once again was Austin and uh, David Epperde linebacker as well and the punting unit coming on now for Mercyhurst. 
I guess the Lakers trying to surprise Shepard with a run on third down after back-to-back -back passes on first and second. Did not do it. A good job by the front seven again on this drive. So that football at close to the 23, so give him a three-yard gain. And now to punt it out of there, Brendan Cole. Cole awaiting that snap at about the 10, gets that punt away. High, booming, spiraling kick. Back to get it is Dorsey, and he'll make that fair catch at the 32-yard line. So that punt will cover 45 yards with no return. Very nicely done by Brendan Cole. You look at his numbers from a week ago, and Cole punting averaged 47 yards on four kicks, and he put two out inside of the 20-yard line. So both of these teams have had pretty good kicking games to get started. 8-14 to play here in quarter number one, third offensive possession for Shepard right now with a 2 to nothing lead thanks to a safety from their own 32, moving from left to right. Two receivers here to the wide side right, and it's a pass to the near side caught by the slot receiver. That's Greg Leonard who works out across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. John Lociato helping to get in there and make that stop. That gain still should be good for 10 yards in the first down. It will be as they now move the chains, and Matt, for your record keeping, that last drive, quarterback Doug Altavella for Mercyhurst set the school passing record for yards overall in his career. Back to the ground game, this time for Shepard on first and 10 from their own of 42. Deontay Glover out there picks up three yards, running here to this right side. It'll be a second and seven from their own 45, and the Rams moving quickly. A little hurry-up offense here for Shepard. Snap back and Bajan to throw, looking near side, and the reception made by D.J. Cornish, who gets forced out of bounds at the 47 in Mercyhurst territory, and that gain is good for eight and a first down. The big tight end, Cornish, only targeted uh, once or twice last week and a big part of the offense last year, so it's good to see him getting involved a lot earlier in the game. Those two uh, targets were late in that second half last week like to see the Rams changing up the pace a little bit here. Screen pass coming near side on that wide receiver screen, but a flag down and the play blown dead. Uh, you can't hear our head referee. He is mic'd, but the wind blowing and so forth, you just can't seem to hear him as he gives the indication of a procedure penalty, minus five. First penalty of the game, and it goes against Shepard. So that'll move it back now to their own 48-yard line, and it's first down at 15, and you hope this does not become a drive killer. Two receivers out to that wide side, Bajan to throw, and a nice catch along the near side between the numbers and the hash marks. That's Dylan Brewer who went down and grabbed that one. He's down to the 37 in Mercyhurst territory. Good job by Dylan Brewer. John Lociato trying to undercut that route and try to get an interception. Nick Cosmas Brewer ran his route perfectly and was right there to make the catch. A beautiful throw by Tyson Bajan as well. 15 yards on that pass completion from the 37 of Mercy Hurst. Again, a wide receiver screen far side. Grab made by Greg Leonard. He was uh, able to make a couple of moves to pick up another yard or two, but then took a big hit at the end. That is Jake Tarasovich, the 5'8 redshirt senior defensive back, who drove him out of bounds at the 35. All of that for two yards. And a good job on the far side by Dylan Brewer. Ended up uh, blocking one defender, then hitting the deck on the block, but he was... Uh, basically a another tackling dummy down on the field able to really as a interception here going back the other way thrown by Tyson Bajan moving up the field quickly is Jake Tarasovich and he gets tackled and tripped up by Tyson Bajan a bad throw by the sophomore quarterback yeah, he was trying to hit his slot receiver to the right, and that one picked off by the linebacker and a great return. And now Mercyhurst has the ball in very good field position. And it's now two weeks in a row we've seen Tyson try to force something and that didn't necessarily need to be there. Shepard moving the ball very well. We saw it last week against Ohio Dominican. You had a successful at trying to... A throw between a, a tight area and I saw it twice last week. That second throw last week was the one that got intercepted and just had a very good tight window throw to Dylan Brewer that was completed the second time trying it. Not so much. Single set in the backfield. Cortez Watson 
Altavilla out from under center, throwing far side. A little wide of his intended target, but a very nice diving grab made out there by Austin Hentz. Yeah, great job by Hentz. Fully extended there, going back towards the football and able to hang on to it as he's hitting the deck. Seven yards on that pass completion. Altavilla now three for three for 14 yards in the early going. From the Ram, a 20-yard line. Second down and three coming. Back in the backfield is Garrett Owens, so the 6'3 redshirt junior will be in the backfield with a fullback lining up in front of him. High formation with Altavilla under center. Short drop and they throw near side. That wide receiver screen caught, slipping a tackle and picking up an extra yard or two. Clay Waldron, Waldron, a redshirt senior wide out. They'll mark his progress all the way down to the 12. That gain good for eight and the first down. And for a running football team, Mercyhurst has done well throwing the football early in this one, especially on this drive, their best drive yet. Helped with the field position, obviously, but throwing the ball very well out of the backfield and just quick uh, five to eight yard routes that is getting everybody comfortable so far on this one. First and a 10 from that Ram 12 yard line, 2 0 Shepard, 4.45 on a running first quarter clock. Dug out to Villa under center, brings a man in motion. Turns, gives a little play action, throws over the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended target, who then got a pretty big hit, and the pass drops incomplete. Well conceived play, nice throw, but Clay Waldron just couldn't bring it in. Again, had to go back a little bit, had to slow down a bit to go back and get that football, but still a very catchable ball. Good throw by Altavilla, putting it right where it needed to be, just couldn't bring it in. And with the way his momentum was carrying him, being Waldron, I think when he falls, that may be in the end zone for a Mercyhurst touchdown, if not a down at the one. His first in completion, Altavilla now four of five passing for 22 yards. Single set in the backfield is Garrett Owens. They'll hand him the football, sidesteps a tackler in the backfield, gets a little bit of a lane inside the 10, and will get down close to that 7-yard line. So that's 5 yards on that one, and we'll bring up a third down and 5. Some nifty footwork there. I've got three carries now, five yards for their leading rusher last week. Garrett Owens, 117 yards, and he had two rushing touchdowns. Fifth play of this possession following the INT that has set up this Laker offense with this great field position. Garrett Owens again, the single set in the backfield. Out to Villa again, out from under center. Throws far side, and that pass got tipped down. Quickly getting upfield the defensive end, David Wilson. He had a good game last week, 6'2", 235, and the sophomore got a big paw up there and knocked it down. He's going to bring the field goal unit on. Field goal would still give Mercyhurst the lead. Shepard on the scoreboard, but only a safety. And how about that for a first quarter score? Three to two. <laughs> if this field goal were to go through, the wind swirling, not really finding a direction. Again, we're only a few blocks off the lake here in Erie. So the wind going from side to side to up and down the field, and you can't really get a good read on it. We'll call it a 25-yard field goal as the spot will be just inside the 15. Brendan Cole to kick it. There is the snap, the placement, the kick. It is up and it is good, but we do have a penalty marker down and this could be trouble for the Rams as it looked like the right side of that special team's front line moved early. Yeah, I think if it was on the offense, that play is stopped before that ball's kicked. So I think it's got to be on the Ram defense. Definitely movement. I'm just trying to clarify which side moved first. Our head referee coming over to talk with the coaching staff for Mercy Hurst, making sure what they would like to do. Marty Scheitzel is the head coach, 18 years with this program, 88 wins, 100 losses. And let's see what will happen. We have offside on the defense. They will decline the penalty and go ahead and take the result of the play, which will be the field goal. That was fourth down and five to go. I, I'm a little confused by that one. I guess where the football was placed, maybe it's not enough for a first down based on what that fourth and five is, whether it's a long five or a short five. Maybe that would have still been fourth and inches or fourth and one. And maybe that's what the conversation was. I wondered why there was such a long conversation about an offsides penalty that you would have thought 
uh, would have given Mercyhurst a first down. I guess it was all about ball placement, whether that penalty would have given a first down. I still think on fourth and inches, you try a quarter. But the way that Mercyhurst runs the football, and you try to get half a yard. Well, as is, the coaching staff saying, let's take the points. We're not going to take them off the board. And so the Shepherd Rams maybe catch a little bit of a break. For Mercyhurst, it was a six-play, 20-yard drive, two minutes and seven seconds. That came after the big INT for Jake Tarasovich. And the field goal up and good for Brendan Cole. And that has Mercyhurst in front, 3-2. to two. This scoring summary brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor, Accountable, Ethical, Responsible. Learn more online at Folk, the number four, WV.com. Cole has the football on the tee at the 35 to our right. He'll approach and the kick is away. Low line drive kick. It's going to be Devin Phelps taking it at the six along the near side hash mark. Has a little opening up that near side hash and gets out to the 29-yard line, maybe even the 30. Let's see where they'll spot it. It will be Ram football from their own 30-yard line. Let's see if this Ram offense can get in gear in some way. They looked pretty good with that first possession as they picked up a couple of first downs, getting to the 43 of Mercyhurst before being forced to punt, then getting the football back after the safety went three plays and out. And the last time they had it, put together another couple of first downs and ran six plays before the costly INT. There it was. What, what cost the Rams last week? Turnovers. And it has them behind right now, 3-2. So from their own 30 on first down and 10, snap back. Bajan hands it off. That's Hebron over top of his left guard and tackle. Got tripped up, stumbles forward. They'll mark his progress at the 33 for a three-yard gain. He was the Ram leading rusher last week with 10 carries, 62 yards, but did have a pair of fumbles from their own 33 on a second down and seven. Bajan has that shotgun snap, looks over the middle, and a little too high on that pass for Greg Leonard off his outstretched hand and incomplete. Yeah, it's where Bajan had to put the football, didn't want to underthrow that and allow either one of those safeties to come over the top and possibly get a hand up there. Wouldn't have been an interception if it's thrown chest level, but uh, probably a hand in there, at least make it tougher for Greg Leonard to bring in the football. So had to put it there. Unfortunately, Leonard just couldn't go up and get it. Rams 0 for 2 on third down conversions in this opening quarter, facing a third and seven here. Bajan has some time, now rolls a little bit, and then throws over the middle, and the grab is made. Dylan Brewer's got it at the midfield stripe. He'll have a Ram a first down, wrestled down there by Keith Brickman, the defensive back. And Dylan Brewer, a guy throughout his career at Shepard, has struggled to get on the field, whether it's injury or just a lot of talent in front of him. Not saying he doesn't have the talent, but just a lot of talent in front of him throughout his career. So it's good to see him getting involved early in this one and getting involved a lot early in this season. Senior leadership out there for a still relatively young receiving core as a whole. 17 yards on the pass completion on first and 10. Pass near side. Devin Phelps goes down to his knees to grab that one at the 46. A four-yard gain, and the Rams are in Mercyhurst territory again. i got to capitalize on the field position. They've crossed that 50-yard line, but have yet to find the end zone. 220 and counting on the first quarter clock here at Saxton Stadium. On second down and six, handoff to Deontay Glover. Glover up the field, cutting to his left, to tripped up and taken down by Hunter Merritt, the redshirt junior DB. That stop coming at the 43, so a pickup of three and a crucial third and three now for Shepard. I think this is a play where you try to find DJ Cornish on a hitch right over the middle. I think a play action pass is they're going to expect that a run is a possibility here with Deontay Glover as that lone back in the pistol right now. But if I were Shepard, I'd look for a little hitch by DJ Cornish right over the middle. On third and three, they're going to run for it. Handoff going to Deontay Glover, able to get through a tackle in the backfield, got to the sideline, got forced out of bounds, and then hit out of bounds. I don't think he got the first down initially, but they're going to get it on the penalty. And I struggle with that penalty because you don't know if he stepped out of bounds. That's a late whistle to say that Glover's out of bounds. Obviously, Shepard will take it. And it yep. is a personal foul. But obviously, Shepard will take that as a first down. But I struggle with that penalty being thrown because there was no whistle until after Glover had stepped out of bounds, apparently, based on where that football was placed. 
It was a gain of only one. Shepard would not have gotten the first down, but as a result of the penalty, they will pick up the first, their fifth first down of this first quarter. Seventh play of the drive coming now from the 27-yard line of Mercyhurst after that penalty marked off. Play action pass and Bajan being hit. Let's it go. Wetzel the catch. The tight end in the flat on this right side moves down to the 20-yard line. A big seven-yard gain. That did not look good initially. Joseph Scro able to get over and help make that ca uh, tackle, pardon me. Looked like uh couldn't tell if that was Bradley Burroughs or Jared Gregory in there, but I think it may have been Burroughs showing that pressure. And Tyson Bajan having to do a little jump throw, not really setting his feet. Hand off to Hebron, running right, lowers the head and shoulders, takes on a couple of tacklers, and he'll be very close to what he needed for the first. It is a ram first down. They scrimmage from the 20 on a second down and three. They'll spot that football down to the 17-yard line. He got just what he needed. Hebron's had two carries for six yards. I got six Ram first downs now in this opening quarter, and we've only got 39 seconds on a running first quarter clock. First and 10 from the 17 of Mercyhurst. The Rams have certainly owned the time of possession in this opening quarter. Pistol formation as Bajan on the play-action pass. Let's it go into the back near corner of the end zone. Caught by D.J. Cornish. It's a Shepherd University Ram touchdown. A simple out and up route by D.J. Cornish in that in near side of the end zone to us in the back corner. Perfectly placed by Tyson Bajan. Shepard in the end zone for the first time today with 22 and a half seconds left in the first quarter. 8-3 the lead. Could be 9-3 extra point pending. There's what Shepard needed. They answer the field goal after the interception that put Mercy Hurst in front 3-2 to two with a very nice nine-play scoring drive covering 70 yards. Hayden August Scriven on for the extra point attempt. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is up, and it is good. We'll take a break with 22 seconds remaining in quarter number one, and Shepard now out in front, 9-3. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming and aviation and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. For 90 years, Mercyhurst University has valued exploration, living by the carpe diem tradition. Here, you'll find a community that celebrates experiences, challenging you to write more, practice harder, dig deeper, and see the world from an unconventional perspective. This is your time to grow, to discover something new, to ignite your passions, and share them with the world. It's your time to seize the day. Drive summary brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor Accountable, Ethical, Responsible. Learn more at folk4wv.com. The former Ram wide receiver, Mike Folk. We'll give you that drive in just a moment. First, August Scriven approaches. The ensuing kickoff, nice deep end over end kick coming down along the far side in the end zone and bounces out of the side of the end zone and it will come out to the 25 yard line. That is number 20 along that far side, Daquan Isom. He's listed as a senior running back back there trying to return a kick but could not return that one. For the Shepherd Rams, a nine play 70 yard drive, three minutes, 21 seconds, 17 yards on the scoring strike from Bajan to Cornish. Third touchdown pass this season for Tyson Bajan and for Cornish, his first touchdown reception. You mentioned Mike Folk, a former wide receiver at Shepherd, picking up that ball that went out of bounds. Another former receiver from Shepherd and current vice president of athletics, Chauncey Winbush. He and uh, Andy Ferguson. One of the assistant ADs making the trip up. Also saw Chip Ransom, SID, up here earlier. I'm sure if Melanie Ford made the trip or not. Haven't seen her. I know some other stuff going on at Shepard over the weekend. Maybe not able to make the trip, but Shepard well represented here. Yeah, first official game in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. From their own 25 on a first and 10, Mercyhurst football penalty marker down. I think it was a delay. They didn't get the snap before that play clock ran out. 
minus five on the delay penalty. Mercyhurst last week only penalized four times for 15 yards. They now have two penalties for 20 yards in the last few minutes. And as a coach, that's got to drive you nuts. The first play of a drive, you're coming off a timeout, a kickoff. You are running straight onto the field knowing what the play is, and you can't get it off in time. Now they're back to the 20-yard line. It'll be a first down and 15. Doug Altavilla, now the all-time leading passer in Mercyhurst history, surpassing Matt Kissel. Well up over now, 6,523 career passing yards for the redshirt senior quarterback. Brings a man in motion. Altavilla out from under center. Play action pass, rolling near side, lets it go, and off the outstretched hand of his intended target, Jason Armstrong, listed as a sophomore fullback, very tightly covered on the play. And Juwan Addison could have put a little more pressure on Altavilla, but he stumbled at coming out making that cut to go chase after the quarterback. From their own 20-yard line, it'll bring up a second down and 15. Still 17 seconds left on our first quarter clock, 9-3. Shepard out in front. This is a tough situation for a team that would like to really establish the run to be a second and very long. High formation behind that quarterback, and he will stumble as he came out from under center, and down he goes, and that's Michael Lowry, a number 14, who's out there right now at the quarterback spot as he came in and took that snap and then stumbled, falling backwards. They'll mark the football, it looks like, at the 15-yard line, so a loss of five, and the final seconds will tick off of this first quarter clock, and we will take a break. Quarter number one in the books. We're back with your second quarter from here in Erie, Pennsylvania, after this timeout with Shepard leading Mercyhurst 9-3. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, Call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. Thanks to our sponsors supporting our coverage of Shepherd Ram football on TV10, Hagerstown Ford, Panhandle Dumpsters, Mirius Group, and Ameriprise Financial, Joe Ferretti Law Office, Green Tree Realty, Mike Folk for Governor, and our title sponsor, Smallwood Small Insurance. Along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller, Caleb Falero at the studio, Eric Sterick, and John Alderton are our TV10 cameramen and also uh, on-site producers for today's broadcast. Quarter number two getting underway. Shepard with a 9-3 lead. And Mercyhurst facing a third down and 20 from their own 15-yard line. Once again, that quarterback, Michael Lowry. So Lowry awaiting that shotgun snap. He's got it. Steps back in the pocket, now flushed, rolling near side, dumps it off. That's Owens out of the backfield. He's across the 20 to the 25, gets to that 30-yard line, gets driven out of bounds there, and will be short of what he needed for the first down. Coming over to help make that a stop is Mike Blackman Herbert, one of the Rams' safeties. So the pass completion to the back out of the backfield, able to net him 15 yards, but five yards short of what they needed for the first down. And so the punting unit has to come on. The Rams look to get, hopefully, pretty good field position out of this. And I wonder what the role is for Lowry in this offense. Didn't throw any at all last week. So you wonder what his role is. Didn't look like there was any trickery or anything in there. Cole awaiting the snap. The punter barely gets it out of there. Nice high spiraling kick. This should be a return from the 24-yard line. That is Dorsey. Works up across the 30. Met and brought down pretty quickly. Rodney Dorsey getting a return of... Uh, just about uh, eight yards after a very nice punt. That punt covering 46 yards before that short return. So 
with 14-11 to play in our first half. Shepard will take over with their fifth offensive possession. And they have done very well in the first half of controlling the time of possession. From their own 34, the Rams will have two receivers here to the left, a single receiver to the right. That's Hebron now in the backfield joining Bajan, who awaits the shotgun snap. Pointing out some blocking assignments. Evan Ostro, the center, gets that snap back in the throw over the middle and out in front of Greg Leonard, too far and incomplete. And if Greg Leonard catches that ball, Hunter Merritt is going to come in and take his head off, coming in hard from that free safety position. Thinking Greg Leonard, while he was fully extended there, maybe is seeing that pressure coming in and knowing that that would be a big hit if he made that catch. And a good job by Merritt being able to slow down and avoid contact there that wasn't necessary. 12 of 17, 118 yards, a touchdown and a pick in the first half for Bajan. He'll hand the football off and Hebron coming near side, quickly getting into that secondary. It is one of the safeties who has to come up to make that stop. That's Keith Brickman. They'll mark it all the way out at the 44-yard line. That's 10 yards and a ram first. Good job out front, the lead blocker, Evan Ostro. One of the guys that's been around this offensive line for a few years now. From their own 44 on a first and 10 receiver screen, far side, Greg Leonard, the catch, getting to the sideline and out of bounds right near that midfield stripe. Corbin Kessler, a linebacker, a senior, over to help force him out after the six-yard gain. And again, the Rams going a little bit of hurry up, if you will. They did this a bunch last week. It's not necessarily hurry up. It's just they're not huddling. So they're not getting to the line and quickly running a play. They're just getting to the line before the play is called and adjustments are made. Able to control the tempo. Yeah, this is becoming more and more common in college football. On second and four, a receiver screen near side. Washington, the freshman, with the catch. Penalty marker comes flying in on the play, and that usually means we're going to have a hold on one of the wide receivers. Making that catch, Jordan Washington. Let's see where the penalty occurred. There we go. Minus 10 holding on the offense. And it looks like they'll mark that off about two yards into that reception. Move the football back to the 42 in Ram territory. And it'll be second down, and we'll call it 12. For the Rams, that is two penalties now for 20 yards in this first half. Shaquan Dyson now lining up in the backfield. Saw him a couple of times last week. Not very much production as a tailback last week. Wanting to throw the football. Bajan has that pocket collapse and he'll be sacked on the play by Aaron Thompson Jr. 285 pounds. He's six foot tall. The sophomore defensive lineman picking up the sack. It's a good job by Bajan even though getting sacked only losing one yard on that play. Felt the pressure coming in from the backside. Moved up in the pocket and I think realized even if he was going to get sacked wasn't going to lose an awful lot. So it brings up now third down and just about 13 yards to go for a first down from their own 41-yard line. Bajan to throw, far side catch made. Brewer immediately wrapped up, and Corbin Kessler gets the tackle and another loss of a yard back to the 40-yard line. Yeah, planned wide receiver screen all the way, and Mercyhurst did a good job of sniffing it out right from the snap, really nothing that Dylan Brewer could do there. Two defenders in his grill right after making the catch. Uh, went to the well maybe once too often, as they say. Shepard two of five now on third down conversions unofficially in this first half. Punting unit coming on. Let's see what Noah Pohl can do here as he awaits the snap at his own 26. Nice spiraling kick, angling far side, and it lands out of bounds right near that 18-yard line. Let's see where they're going to mark it. It will be directly on the 18. That's another solid kick of 42 yards and inside the 20-yard line. And a three for three on kicks landing inside the 20. Good job by Pohl. He may be making a bid to be a player of the game just the way he's been punting the football in this tight one. 11-42 to play in the first half. And a 9-3 Shepard lead. And look how quickly the offense getting on the field for Mercyhurst. The first play, the last drop coming off the sideline. It was a delay of game, wasting no time here. 
Once again, the quarterback is Lowry. He's rolling near side, lets that pass go as the open receiver, Austin Hentz, across the 30, out to about the 32-yard line, helping to bring him down. The Ram linebacker, Jared Austin, and Austin stays down on that play and is holding his right knee. Oh, you hate to see that. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was Jared Austin that was injured last week, and I believe it was a lower body injury as well last week. 13 yards on that pass completion from Lowry to Hentz. And timeout on the field now as the Ram training staff comes out to tend to Jared Austin. They are looking at that right knee. Let's go ahead and send it back to the studio. We'll take a 30-second break and then return to Tulio Field at Saxon Stadium where Shepard leads Mercyhurst 9-3. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. Jared Austin is to his feet being helped off, but he is putting some pressure on that right leg as he is walking off with assistance. Hopefully it is something that is not serious and might allow him to get back into this game. Well, that last pass completion for 13 yards as we look back through is just the second first down in this first half for Mercyhurst. This Ram defense has really played a strong first half. They've played a strong first half and they've done what they needed to do against the run. Mercyhurst hasn't really picked up anything on the ground. It's been through the air and if you're going to be beat by them you want to be beat through the air. Well, and I've tried to look up and down the sideline just a little bit to see if we see that number 15 of Doug Altavilla. And I have not really spotted him on the sideline as we've had the uh, new quarterback, Lowry, in there the last two series. Here's a pitch play going to Garrett Owens. Redshirt Jr. running back off the left side of the line. Picks up three yards out to the 35. And a new quarterback in now for Mercyhurst. Looks like a number 14. Well, that's yeah, that's Lowry, who has been in uh, the last series Correct, you're and right. now this you're series. Right. Sorry yeah. about that. Four, two 14s <laughs> on the roster. Yeah, I love when they put an offensive guy yeah, and a defensive the, yeah. guy in the same uniform number. You have to just remember, hey, who's on the field, offense or defense? Put a little star next to that one in the roster. On second down and seven, man in motion near side. Lowry on the play-action pass, has some time, throws far side. Catch made and staying inbounds, picking up extra yards. Austin Hens eventually forced out of bounds in Ram territory at the 39-yard line. Chris Jones going for the interception there, but a good throw by Lowry. The ball just beating Jones to the point of contact. About 26 yards on that pass completion. I've got three of three passing for 54 yards for Lowry since he's come in. Kind of like what this young man is doing. First down and at 10. Now in Ram territory at the 39-yard line. This is their best offensive possession so far. Lowry out from under center, giving that pitch to Owens, looking for running room near side, able to break one tackle. Now he's going to throw the football, and it is going to be knocked away and incomplete. Chris Jones almost had the interception. It was really Austin Hentz, the wideout, who became the defensive back to knock that one down. I assume that was an intended play because of where the receivers were running the route, but that was the strangest halfback pass I think I've ever seen in my entire life, just with the delay of Owens uh, trying to get to the outside, cutting back up towards the middle, then throwing off of his back foot. If that was a planned halfback pass, that took a long time to set up. I know a lot of pressure early in that play, but I I'm not convinced that the receiver just wasn't running down up the field and Owens decided to try it. Wow, that's a gutsy play if that's the way it was. Out of the shotgun, Lowry awaiting the snap, going to let it go near side, reaching up to try to pull it in is Marcus plaque and he can't control it bobbled that football and then got hit and dropped it and that is Donnell Howard a defensive back in on the coverage so the incompletion brings up third down and ten 
Big third down from that Ram 39. Right now 0 of 3 on third down conversions in this first half for Mercyhurst after they went 4 of 15 last week. Four down linemen for the Rams. Three receivers coming here to the wide side right. A single receiver to the left. Out of the gun. Lowry has that shotgun snap. Sets up the screen to the far side. And the pass is incomplete. Owens could not hang on to it. And perhaps he felt the presence of Hassan Marshall, a defensive end, who was right there. And probably not the worst thing in the world. He dropped it because while either way I believe it's going to be a punt, he catches that, he loses five or six. So by dropping it, it just makes it a 4th and 10 rather than a 4th and 16. Well, again, this offense just unable to get anything sustained as the Ram defense does its job. Three straight incompletions after that 26-yard completion that got Mercyhurst down to the Ram 39. you got to be cautious for a fake here. And to punt it away, Brendan Cole awaiting that snap at the 48 in Mercyhurst territory and a delay of game penalty and perhaps one of those to back him up and give him a little more room. Yeah, I think that one's intentional. You don't see a whole lot of concern on the near sideline right below us. And I think that going to... But Shepard going to decline that penalty. A smart move there you by go. head coach Ernie McCook. <laughs> Not going to let you do it. Nope. Would have been three penalties for 25 yards instead. They will force Cole to try to pin the Rams deep with that punt coming from the 39. And that ball's going to land inside the 10, take a sideways bounce, and be touched dead at the 6-yard line. Bradley Burrows down there to touch it. Matt, are we going to have to name two players of the game a punter for each team? Because right now the kicking game is spectacular. It has been very good. And it has been very key when you consider it's just a 9-3 football game. The Rams with the lead 9-34 to play here in our first half. Yeah, the battle of field position is a big one in this game. And so far, both punters wanting to make their mark on this football game. See if the Rams come out conservative on first down from their own six. Bajan is going to be under center. Deontay Glover behind him. Takes the handoff over the left guard and tackle. Pushes his way forward, but only gets two to that eight-yard line. Nice job up front. That's 98. Seljon Williams, he's a senior, goes 276-5, helping to uh, fill that hole. So plus two yards out to the eight. Second down and eight coming for the Rams. So far in this first half, seven carries, 17 yards, the unofficial number for Glover. The Rams really haven't run the football a lot either. Hebron has picked up a few yards, had one nice carry that went for better than 10, and we have illegal procedure on the Rams. So the Rams going in the wrong direction. As the minus one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> we'll take it back to the three-yard line. And you expect physical mistakes in a football game, but so far on both sides, most of the penalties, I think all but one, have been ones that were mental mistakes. They've been late hits. They've been the false starts, delay of games, things like that. So those are ones that coaches have the biggest problem with. You understand your body's going to let you down every now and again, but you got to be sharp between the ears. Three penalties, 25 yards unofficially on the Rams. On first down, the handoff to Glover. Met in the hole, spins, and is able to fight free and, and get an extra yard or two out of it. They'll move it back out to the six-yard line, and Glover's able to pick up three yards on that carry. The Rams will now face third down and at 10. And I expect at this point in the field, you're probably going to see a run again. I don't think you want Tyson dropping back. and to be in the pistol, so already starting in the end zone. Don't want him to have to create that pocket a yard or two deep in the end zone. Shepard, two of five on third down conversion so far in this first half. It will be a pistol formation. 
Bajan has that shotgun snap. He will throw on the play-action pass, a deep out far side, and a great grab by Devin Phillips coming back for the football. Shows the strong hands as he pulls it in, going out of bounds at the far side, 19, 13 yards on the completion. Yeah, great job by Devin Phillips, and we talked about it early in the game. He was nicked up at practice this week. You wondered what his role was going to be in this week's ball game, and so far having a great impact in this game. Boy, that is a big pass completion out to the 19-yard line, first down and 10. Unofficially now for the Rams, able to uh, pick up 10 first downs in this first half. Shepard will hand it off, going back to the ground game. Deontay Glover very quickly wrapped up and taken down for a loss of one. Yeah, Cole Weaver getting blown up on that play. A couple of linemen, a defensive lineman in very quick. For Mercyhurst, interior lineman getting blown up a bit on that play. Second and 11 coming for Shepard. Under seven minutes on a running second quarter clock, 9-3, the Ram lead. Bajan has that shotgun snap, throwing near side. Catch made by Dylan Brewer, the slot receiver. He's out across the 25 to the 27, taken down there by Kessler. That game good for just about nine, and Shepard will face a third down and two. That's a very important play on second and long to give them a manageable third down. So from the 27, out of the shotgun, Bajan awaiting that snap. He's got it and wants to throw. Far side, catch made by Dylan Brewer. He's got the first down as he'll get to the 34-yard line. That's seven yards on that game. And that was as good of a curl as you can ask for. Tyson Bajan throwing that before Brewer even made his cut to look back at where the ball was coming from. So by the time Brewer turned around, that ball was only about six feet from him. He was able to just hold on to it and fall to the ground. I have the Rams now four of seven on third down conversions in this first half. And as a result, they have dominated the time of possession. They've run well over 30, almost 40 plays compared to only about 20 for Mercy Hurst. Handoff going to the tailback, and that is Ronnie Brown, a 5'11 freshman at a Dundalk High School in Baltimore, Maryland. He busted off the right side, a big gain all the way out to the 47. So picks up 13 yards on his first carry. Now the fourth different running back we've seen for Shepard in this ball game. They'll hand it off to him again, running right. He gets Metz driven sideways, but still manages to scoot across the midfield stripe. And that one will go down to the 49-yard line in Mercyhurst territory. It'll be about a four-yard gain. A lot of run in there to pick up four. Yeah, very quick, some happy feet and when he's hitting those holes. That was a good thing on the first run to bounce it to the outside. But I think dancing a little too much, he's got to pick a hole and run. Brown again behind the quarterback in the pistol formation. Bajan wants to throw. Pump fakes now goes over the middle and tipped up into the air and incomplete. Almost got it to D.J. Cornish. But good defense there by Jake Tarasovich to help uh, break up that play. I'm not sure Tarasovich ever touched that football. I don't think he did either. I was going to say, he did a good job of getting his hand up and making it hard for Cornish to get that football, but I don't think he was ever in on that deflection. I think Cornish is... Right arm came over his shoulder, and Cornish tried to tip the ball to himself as he was falling to the turf. Tenth play of this possession that started at the Rams' six-yard line. They now face a third and six from the Mercyhurst 49. Bajan throwing, and in and out of the hands of the intended target. The Rams looking for an interference penalty. Devin Phelps felt like the defensive back got there early. Keith Brickman able to knock that pass away, and with the incompletion, the Rams will bring on the punting unit. A looked a pretty... Bang, bang to me on who got there first, the ball or the defender. And I think that's a tough play for an official to make. I don't think any official was in the position to make that call either. So I think that's a good no call. Obviously, the Shepard would have liked to get that first down via the penalty. But just knock, I don't think that's going to happen on that play. Noah Pohl to punt it out of there. Snap is back. Gets that kick away. Angling far side. The return man's got it at the 14-yard line and then gets drilled up around the shoulder pads and taken down. That is a big special teams hit. And on that return looks to be a four Cortez Watson. Great special teams hit by David Eppert. He was in right around the, the top of the shoulder pads and clotheslining a defender. 
Well, let's see what we're going to get. Is that going to be the call? Personal foul against the Rams. I couldn't hear what the explanation was. That has to be it. I mean, Eppert came in high. I'm thinking that's what the penalty is going to be. I don't think he was helmet to helmet at all. It looked just it like certainly a, wasn't. a clean tackle. It was just up high. Well, the punt went for 35, the return for about five or six, but now that penalty being added to it moves the football all the way out to the 32-yard line. We keep the stats up here, uh, unofficial stats, as we're going on the game, but, Matt, you'll appreciate this on the Official stats, I guess some issue with the roster. Billy Brown's on this roster. Jeff Ziemba's caught a few passes along with James Gupton and Connor Jessup. Nice. All on the receiving court today as we'll get a timeout by Mercyhurst. All right, let's go ahead and take a full timeout as well. A 60-second break with 434 remaining in our first half. Shepard leading Mercyhurst 9-3. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price. And we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it. Period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Action very quickly back underway after the timeout and back to throw the football. Lowry throwing along the near side. A diving catch is made right on the sideline. Clay Waldron will get credit for that catch, even though it seemed that he came down out of bounds. Yeah, I think his first point of contact was his elbow coming down, unless that right knee, and from our vantage point, couldn't necessarily see that right knee come down as the referee come up the sideline, had the better view. So I'll take his word on it because that's the call on the field. Anyway, <laughs> but I, it looked from our vantage point like Waldron's right elbow came down before anything. A gain good for 15 yards, first down and 10 from their own 47. High backfield behind Lowry, who's going to hand it off. Owens finds an opening off this right side of the line quickly into the secondary. Gets inside that Ram 40, down to the 36-yard line. Tim Womack, a linebacker, helping to make that stop. Waiting to see a run by Garrett Owens like that all day. You knew it was coming. A guy that's going to run the ball an awful lot again last week. At 30 attempts, 125 yards. Biggest run for him yet today. And that gained good for 17 yards. First down and 10 from that Ram 36. High backfield now behind Lowry. Out from under center on the play action pass. He's going to throw deep over the middle. Penalty marker is down. Grab is made. That's Austin Hens tackled inside the 20 at the 17. But a penalty marker down where typically you might find holding. Yeah, definitely in the area of a hold. Those sticks aren't moving yet either. But looking like it, the way the celebration is, that's a defensive hold. It was a personal foul. You could actually catch a little bit of that off of the microphone, so that play will go down to the 17-yard line. So the gain was good for 19 yards on the pass completion, and then you add on, it looks like, the half the distance to the goal that is going to take it all the way down to the 8-yard line. So a couple of very costly penalties in this possession for Shepard. And down to 3.13 to play here in our first half. And from the Ram 8, first down and goal to go for Mercyhurst, trailing 9-3. Play clock now under 10-2 as well. Seven seconds, six seconds down that play clock. Lowry out from under center, hands it off. Owens met in the backfield, and down he goes. Knifing in there quickly is the Ram linebacker, Corey Shell. That's a big hit. 
A loss all the way back out to that 13-yard line, minus five. Yeah, not an easy guy to bring down by yourself. Did a good job of going low and just making sure that Owens couldn't go anywhere. Tell you, this Lowry kid has come in and really done a nice job for this Mercyhurst offense. Second down goal to go from the Ram 13. 220 on a running second quarter clock. High backfield again behind him. There is the snap and on the play action, the throw, the fade, far back corner of the end zone and in can play. Looking to get that one to Nick Altavilla. He's a redshirt junior wide receiver. I shall assume that he is uh, related to Doug Altavilla, who is uh, was the starting quarterback. <laughs> who also had a brother who played baseball here at Mercyhurst, we were told, and now is playing in the big leagues. Altavilla, apparently a big family here in the Erie area. And, again, you'd love to know what happened to Altavilla. Uh, didn't look injured on any play. I didn't think, at least. We'll all see sudden, if we can find out at the half. And all of a sudden, Lowry has been in for this is what is third or fourth possession now. Third and goal to go from the 13, 0 of 4 on third down conversions in this first half is Mercyhurst. And now we are going to have a timeout as Mercyhurst will burn their second one. They'll have one remaining. Let's go ahead and take a 30-second break and then be right back with your score. 2 11 to play in the first half. Shepard 9, Mercyhurst 3. We are back once again here at Tulio Field at Saxon Stadium. Beautiful Saturday afternoon here in northern Pennsylvania, just off of Lake Erie in Erie, PA. Breeze blowing, sunny skies, temperatures in the 70s. It's been a defensive struggle in this first half. Shepard got the scoring started with a safety. Mercyhurst answered with a field goal to take the lead. The Rams with a touchdown, and that's where we stand, 9-3 Shepard. But Mercyhurst has a third and goal at the Ram 13 coming out of the timeout. Lowry out of the gun, has a back to his left side, awaits that snap, has it, now being flushed from the pocket, rolling near side, throws, and a one-handed catch made by Austin Hens, who then steps in to the end zone in front of that front pylon. It's a Mercyhurst touchdown. Well, that was one heck of a touchdown catch by Hens. Not only to be able to bring the ball in with one hand, pin it to that left shoulder, but also realize that he wasn't in the end zone yet. And his momentum carrying him out of bounds at the last second had to step inside that pylon. I think Lowry would like that throw back, obviously, uh, with only about five or six yards in between the receiver and the quarterback there. you think there'd be a pass a little more uh, between the numbers, but still a great touchdown catch by Hanson. The extra point is up and good, and Mercyhurst takes the lead. Brendan Cole, four for four now in PATs this season. Don't go away. A 60-second break, 2.02 left in the first half. And Shepard now trailing Mercyhurst, 10-9. Here's to the grown-ups. Your car is now your office. Stage, nursery. Shh, sorry, insuring it shouldn't be a headache. Erie, number one in the nation for highest satisfaction with the auto insurance purchase experience six years in a row. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent, not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person like this. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. Erie Insurance. For 90 years, Mercyhurst University has valued exploration, living by the carpe diem tradition. Here, you'll find a community that celebrates experiences, challenging you to write more, practice harder, dig deeper, and see the world from an unconventional perspective. This is your time to grow, to discover something new, to ignite your passions and share them with the world. It's your time to seize the day.
We give you the scoring drive summary brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor Accountable, Ethical, Responsible. Find out more online at folk4wv.com. For Mercyhurst, six plays, 68 yards, 2 minutes, 32 seconds, 13 yards on the touchdown pass going from Michael Lowry to Austin Hentz. First TD pass for Lowry this year, second touchdown catch for Hentz. Cole with the ensuing kickoff taken along the far sideline near the 10-yard line by... Number 30 for the Rams, that's the running back, Ronnie Brown, who comes to the near side of the field, working his way up across the 30 and the 35. Got hit pretty hard in the legs that knocked him up into the air and down, but a very nice return of about 27 yards. Now the Rams needed that, some good field position. The Rams need to settle things down. Two big personal foul penalties, a part of that last scoring drive for Mercyhurst. And again, it's the mental mistakes that that hurt a football team. The physical mistakes are going to happen. Now, that's part of the game. That's part of sports in general. But it's uh, the ones that are preventable that are the ones that usually cost you football games and the ones that are going to damage you the most within the ball game. Timeouts remaining for Shepard, and so plenty of time to try to go down and get some points. A deep pass far side on an out pattern to Devin Phelps. He cuts back to his left to the middle of the field and was able to work his way down to about the 41-yard line in Mercyhurst territory. That gain will be good for 22 yards. That's a great job by Devin Phelps. He's right near the sideline. Most receivers are just going to turn to that outside and get out of bounds knowing they have the first down. He kind of faked going outside towards the sideline. And then cut back inside, and then now we'll have another <laughs> offensive penalty for Shepard. Yep, five yards lost on the illegal procedure penalty. Going to move the football back out to the 46 in Mercyhurst territory. It will bring up first and 15. Unofficially, I've got seven penalties, 70 yards now in this first half for the Rams. Another mistake. Now first down and long, 120 and counting here in the first half. Bajan to throw, hit as he let it go. Coming back to get it is Brewer. They'll mark his progress at about the 35 before he got wrestled backwards there. That's a pickup of 11, and it looks like the Rams will go ahead and burn a timeout. Timeout Shepard with 112 remaining here in our first half. And Shepard will face about a second down and four from the 35 of Mercyhurst. We'll go ahead and keep it here for right now. Second and manageable for the Rams. And moving the ball very efficiently on this drive. But they've gotten to about this point in the field, give or take about five or ten yards, a couple of times in this ball game. And this just seems to be where their drives are halted. I think they need to get inside the 30-yard line and try to creep closer to the red zone and keep this rhythm going. They need a score before halftime. Right now, they're struggling offensively to put a couple of series together within a drive. Their first drive halted at the 43 of Mercyhurst. Their next drive at the 47 of Mercyhurst. Threw an interception at the 35 of Mercyhurst. Got a touchdown. Then were at their own 41 when they were forced to punt. And at the 49 of Mercyhurst when they were forced to punt. So Shepard has had their opportunities, as you've said, have not been able to take advantage. Let's see if they can here. Second down and four from the Laker 35. Out of the gun, Bajan has that snap. Looking near side, throwing deep for Devin Phelps, and he's got it in the end zone. Yes, the catch is made. It's a Shepard University Ram touchdown. The ball a little underthrown. Devin Phelps doing a fantastic job of adjusting to it. Not a bad throw by Tyson Bajan at all, and good coverage on the back end by Keith Brickman. What it's looking like on that back end, and just a great job by Mercyhurst defense, but also a great catch by Devin Phelps and another long touchdown. He's now got one in each game. That took all of 48 seconds to answer that Mercyhurst touchdown. And Hayden August Scriven on to try to add that PAT. Snap back placement down. Kick is up and no good as he pushed it wide to the right. And the Rams will settle for six, meaning a five-point lead. A 60-second break, and then we are back to Saxon Stadium with Shepard leading Mercyhurst 15-10. to 10. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. 
And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price, and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Hayden August to Scriven tees it up at the 35-yard line just to our right. As he approaches, we'll give you the drive summary for Shepard. A very impressive drive. Three plays, 63 yards in 48 seconds. 35 yards, the touchdown pass from Bajan to Phelps. Extra point, no good. Rams lead at 15-10. to 10. Nice high kick. Bobble dropped inside the 10-yard line. It was loose out at the 15, but recovering that one will be Mercy Hurst, number 21, the running back, Garrett Owens. Yeah, it looked like three return men back that time for Mercy Hurst. Don't see that all that often. And two of them just both thinking, hey, I got the football. Owens the one to get on that loose football. They will mark it at the 15-yard line. Now let's see how Mercyhurst handles it with one minute left and just one timeout. How much will they put it in the air with their backup quarterback, Michael Lowry? Doug Altavilla was missing in action along the sideline. We couldn't even find him on the sideline, thinking he must have gone back to the locker room. He is back on the sideline, still in full pads. No brace on the leg, no sling for the arm with his helmet on. So unless it's some sort of concussion protocol of some sort, doesn't look like any extremity injury. So Lowry back out there. He is a freshman taking that snap, and the play is blown dead. Illegal procedure. Mercy Hurst will back up five yards. Got to look back through my total so far in this first half to see. I would have that as just three penalties for 25 yards. Whistled against Mercyhurst in this first half. So they've done a nice job not committing penalties. This one's a big one, though. Moves them back to their own 10-yard line. And now this is where the Rams need to be opportunistic and get their first turnover of the season. They didn't force a turnover last week against Ohio Dominican. Back to throw the football. Lowry throws it over the middle. Catch made by Nick Altavilla. The redshirt junior wide out very quickly taken down, helping to make that stop, Corey Shell. They'll spot that football out at the 14-yard line, plus four. And I think Mercyhurst is going to be intent to take this one into the locker room, down by five. 35 seconds down, counting in the second quarter. No timeouts called on either side. And it looks like on second and 11, they're going to run one more play, probably give it to Owen, see if he can break one for long. But other than that, just take it into the locker room down by five. Yeah, there it was, the handoff to Owens, and uh, no place for him to go. He got bottled up very quickly in the backfield, and it looked like helping to make that tackle was Kyle Smith, the linebacker. And now it looks like the Rams will burn a timeout. Yeah, they had two to play with, now just down to one. But if they can get a stop here on what's going to be a third and 15, it at least is going to make Mercyhurst punt the football. And anything can happen on a punt return. Or perhaps you even go for the block. One of five on third down conversions in this first half is the unofficial number for Mercyhurst. I've got seven carries, 16 yards in this first half for Garrett Owens, the starting tailback who had 30 carries for 117 yards last week. By the way, with that 100-plus yard performance, it was the seventh time in his career that Owens has gone for 100 yards or more. Third down, 15 from their own 10-yard line. Mercyhurst football down by five. Yes, 15 to 10. Figure this one out if you haven't tuned in for the entire game. No field goals, no two-point conversions, and Shepard has 15 points. Here's a riddle for you, <laughs> or at least a math problem to figure out. I formation this time as Lowry is up under center on this third down and long play. Brings a man in motion from right to left. Snap in the handoff. Owens coming near side. The Rams able to string it out, and eventually they bring him down after a gain of one to the 11-yard line, and Shepard will again burn a timeout and force the punt. 
And Coach McCook wants more time put on the clock. He called the timeout with about 11 and a half seconds left and now down to 9.6. So you're talking at least a second and a half to almost two seconds taken off the clock, and we'll see if that's adjusted at all. And I think it should be to at least 10 to 10 and a half seconds. All right now, no indication. We are going to have it adjusted now. 12, 12 seconds. seconds. Wow, it's even more than I was anticipating. I saw the the jog down the field by Ernie McCook trying to call that timeout. At, when I noticed, it was about 11.2. So 12 seconds left. And even if this is a short punt that happens to go out of bounds or even a short return, you may still have a Hail Mary opportunity here at the end of the half for Tyson Bajan. Mercyhurst is going to punt deep in their own territory. For the Rams, a new returner going back deep. That's 86, Zane Lewis. Listed as a redshirt freshman, a wide out of Westminster, Maryland. We've now seen four different return men in two weeks for the Rams, just on punts. Cole, out of his own end zone, awaits that snap. He'll punt from just about the goal line. There is the snap back. Punt is away. Low line drive. Lewis comes up. He's got it at the 45-yard line and immediately hit and taken down. Cortez Watson with the great special teams tackle. Yeah, great open field tackle and still an opportunity here for a Hail Mary at the 45-yard line. Definitely a throw that Tyson Bajan can get into the end zone. Roughly 34 yards on that punt. Virtually no return. The one thing you're concerned about on a Hail Mary opportunity. They're not necessarily concerned about because if Tyson Bajan throws an interception, it's not the end of the world except for his stat line. Obviously, you don't want those interceptions in your stats. But Shepard is not the tallest <laughs> at wide receiver this year. In the past, they've had those big, lanky receivers. And right now, they just don't have those. Not necessarily the tallest at the quarterback position. Three down linemen and three back in that prevent style defense. Here is a quick pass to the near side. Devin Phelps with that grab, and he will get to the near side 35-yard line, forced out of bounds, and time has run off the clock. It looks like they'll spot it right at that 35-yard line, and it'll be a gain of 10 and nothing more than a chance to pad the stats just a little bit. Interesting play call to close out that first half. So the teams head into the locker rooms. We're at the intermission here at Tulio Field at Saxon Stadium in Erie, Pennsylvania. We will take a two-minute timeout and then return to get our halftime activities underway with the score, Shepard 15 and Mercyhurst 10. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. We're at the half. Time for a scoring recap, stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV10 broadcast team.
We're back once again here in Erie, Pennsylvania. It's the WVU Medicine Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Center halftime show. The best in health care. Close to home, it's WVU Medicine. Along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller. Our engineer at the studio, Caleb Falero, Eric Sterick, and John Alderton, our cameraman and on-site producers for today's TV10 Ram broadcast. Matt, as we look back at this first half, it has been a unique one, to say the least. Shepard, with the opening possession, looked pretty good as they went from their own 19 to the 43 of Mercyhurst on a third and six, an incomplete pass, brought the punting unit on, and uh, really, uh, Noah Pohl has been one of the uh, top players in this first half as his punt went 40 yards, pinning Mercyhurst at the three-yard line on their very first play. They handed it off to the tailback, Garrett Owens. He was met in the hole by Chris Lane. The linebacker knocked the football free, and it was recovered by Mercyhurst in the end zone. A safety gave Shepard a 2 to nothing lead. Yeah, at that point, you're going, okay, Shepard's defense finally stepping up into this one. I think really bouncing back a little bit from the second half they had last week against Ohio Dominican. And and while you mentioned this later on in the first half, that Shepard looking for that first turnover. I know not in the stat column is that going to be a turnover, uh, but I think you consider that a turnover. When you're able to force a fumble, when you're able to get the safety and force a punt, I think while it's not going to go down as a turnover, that's just as good as a turnover. But it was a good way to start defensively, and you're thinking, okay, let's see if the defense can spark the offense a bit. And they did a bit, but at the uh, – at the end, they at the end of the first half, end of the first quarter and second quarter, Shepard has struggled to put together long drives, and I think that last drive that gate that got them to the 15-10 was their best drive of the game so far. All right, let's tell you how we got there. So Shepard gets the football back after the free kick. They go three plays and out, give it to Mercy Hurst. They go three plays and out. The Rams get the football and again begin to move. A couple of first downs. They go from their own 32 to the 35-yard line in Mercy Hurst territory. And then Tyson Bajan forced to pass. It got picked off by Jake Tarasovich. He was able to return that football all the way to the Ram 27. The Shepard defense, they bent but did not break. Gave up one first down but was able to get the hold and Mercyhurst went for a 25 yard field goal. The kick was up and good. It was roughly fourth down and five. Must have been fourth down and five and a half because the Rams actually jumped offside on the field goal attempt. They went to the head coach for Mercyhurst and uh, Marty Schatzel said, we'll keep the points on the board and decline the penalty. I think that was a very questionable decision. You look at that now, it's a 15-14 ball game. If he decide, Assuming they're going to punch it in the end zone from that close first and goal from inside the five, I just, I'm not sure I understand that. Even if, depending on where the ball is, it becomes a fourth and inches. You don't trust your running style team, the hard-nosed offensive football team you have to get less than a yard on that. I, just, I didn't necessarily agree with that, but that's why we're up here and not on the <laughs> sideline, and they got points regardless either way. So uh, with the field goal, it was a 3-2 to two lead for Mercy Hurst. Shepard would get the football on the ensuing kickoff and put together their best offensive drive of the first half. Nine plays, 70 yards, 3 minutes and 21 seconds. Capped by a 17-yard touchdown pass. Tyson Bajan to DJ Cornish. The Rams get the PAT and take a 9-3 to three lead. And that was the score as we went into quarter number two. Mercy Hurst, with their next possession, would be forced to punt, but ultimately pinned the Rams back at the six-yard line. Shepard able to get the ball out to midfield before being forced to punt, and at that, Mercy Hurst got the football after a penalty, a personal foul on the punt return, gave them the ball at the 32. They put together a six-play, 68-yard drive, two minutes and 32 seconds, and it was a 13-yard touchdown pass going from Michael Lowry to Austin Hens. And with the extra point, Mercyhurst took a 10-9 lead, but it would be short-lived as the Rams on the very next possession after the kickoff. They started at their own 37 and needed only three plays to cover 63 yards. Took them 48 seconds, and with a minute and four left in the first half, a 35-yard touchdown pass from Bajant to Devin Phelps. Gave the Rams a 15-10 to 10 lead, but the extra point for Hayden August Scriven missed wide to the right, and 
That's why we have the kind of quirky 15 to 10 Shepherd lead here at the intermission. We'll give the official stats coming up in our next segment after the break. Uh, but time of possession, 19 minutes and 12 seconds for Shepherd, just 10:48 for Mercyhurst. Shepherd has done a very good job of controlling the tempo of this ball game, and we'll give the stats as uh, best we can. Again, I told you a little bit earlier that. The numbers apparently not matching up, and it will be a little bit of a blast from the past. We'll give you just a couple of those numbers in our next segment. All right, right now we need to go ahead and take a break, and uh, let's see when we come back. We'll see what else is going on around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference and some other uh, Division Two and Division One scores as well. That's on our halftime report brought to you by WVU Medicine Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers, the best in health care, close to home. At the intermission, your score, Shepard 15 and Mercyhurst 10. If you hang the WVU Medicine sign, it certainly has helped take us to another level. Evolving what we try to do as physicians and as a health system and organization is the mission of WVU Medicine, and it's an exciting mission to be a part of. With the knowledge and the, the years of practice that they've put into this institution, you know, they, they know a lot. They can help you, and they've helped me a lot. Having people treated locally uh, enhances their overall uh, care. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work, and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming, and aviation, and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right, even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowners insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. We welcome you back into our halftime show brought to you by WVU Medicine Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers. We are at the intermission, a 15 to 10 lead for Shepard here at Mercy Hurst. Time to see what else is going on around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. And for that, I'll turn it over to Matt. Well, a final uh, from noon today. Again, we're getting a later start, so a lot of games have already uh, finished up. A few from 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock have gone final. Westchester is taking on Gannon. All Westchester, 48-14. IUP was at Millersville. Millersville shut out IUP all over Millersville, 54-2-0. A final between Cal U and Kutztown. Cal U, the home team in that one, and Kutztown getting the seven-point win, 35-28. In the third quarter, it's Clarion welcoming Lock Haven, and it's Clarion with the lead in the third quarter, 34-7. Also in the third quarter, East Stroudsburg's at Seton Hill, and it's East Stroudsburg up 21-12. A three o'clock, or a six o'clock game rather for Slippery Rock and Shippensburg. So that game has not started. It'll start right after our game finishes up, or in our fourth quarter. And of course, a game around the region that will be paying some attention to on our drive home because they don't kick off, I believe, until 6 o'clock. I'm anxious to see how Ohio Dominican does at Valdosta State today after that hard-fought come-from-behind win in Shepherdstown last weekend. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, at 6 o'clock kick. Finley also playing Northwood tonight. Finley, a, a former opponent of the Shepherd Rams, the last playoff game the Shepherd Rams were in. And real quick, before we a jump to Division One scores. Let's take a look at some of the Mountain East scores. Let's start with the games that took place on Thursday as the Mountain East is doing more and more Thursday mm -hmm. games each year. Wheeling taking on Fairmont State. All Fairmont State 53-10. Charleston at Urbana. Urbana getting the win over Charleston 28-20. That's a shock for Charleston. And Notre Dame is at West Liberty. Notre Dame gets the win 43-24. No shocker there and finishing up in the games. I don't think there were any on Friday. No, none this week in the Mountain East. And today, 
A couple of games already finished up, and one game at 7 o'clock tonight. It's Frostburg and Concord. That's a game that was at 12 o'clock this afternoon. Final Frostburg over Concord, 52 to 14. Good win for the Bobcats. Welcome into the Mountain East. Yeah, and I, you know that's a Frostburg State team that had been very successful in their particular uh, level of play before moving into Division Two in the MEC. So uh, not fully surprised by that score. And a tight one between the Yellow Jackets of West Virginia State hosting the Pioneer. Of Glenville State, a 33 30 win for West Virginia State, and they kick off at 7 o'clock tonight. It is Wesleyan at Davidson. And there's your scores from around the region in Division Two. And real quick, let's give the Division One scores. But there first, you I go. think you have something. No, that's what uh, I was waiting for because well, go ahead and start with yours. I don't want to start with mine, I don't want to bring mine up. It's our Maryland minute here. No, I, ha- I have to bring it up because I, I, if I get excited about the wins, I got to. Take the losses, and what a Maryland Saturday for you, losing to Temple 20-15. to 15. Such a That is such a Maryland Terp thing to do is lose to Temple. Your highest top 25 rating Two since 2006. Wins. Your first top 25 rating period since 2013. And what do you do? You go up to Philly and lose to Temple. What are you doing, Terps? You're killing me. Meanwhile, as a Mountaineer fan, we can get excited. How about the West Virginia Mountaineers? Could they handle NC State today with Hall of Fame weekend in Morgantown? Yes, they can. What's the final? 44 to 27. The Mountaineers over the Wolfpack. Austin Kendall, 27 for 40, 272 yards, three touchdowns. And here's the big thing, just one pick. Nice. How did they run the the football? That's the ratio you need. It looks like McCoy, 10 carries, 66 yards, two touchdowns. So not even numbers that are going to jump off the page at you. What does that tell you? The defense played really well this week. Well, and it also tells you they ran the football better than the first two games. Remember the Mountaineers came into this one near the bottom or at the bottom in several rushing categories. So they got a little ground game going. That helped to support that passing game. Austin Kendall came back and threw well, and the Mountaineers are 2-1 and one after a big win over NC State. So there you go. Some scores from around Division Two and Division One. When we come back, we'll take a look at the numbers from the first half. We are at the intermission here in Erie, Pennsylvania, with Shepard leading Mercyhurst 15 to 10. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and bulk pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price. And we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it. Period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Back again here at Saxon Stadium on the campus of Mercy Hurst University. A beautiful Saturday afternoon for college football. And don't go away. Uh, we got an exciting second half coming up. Shepard right now with a five-point halftime lead. Let's take a look at the numbers from the first half. Brought to you by Joe Ferretti Law Office, delivering first-rate service and results for our clients, vehicle accidents, slip and fall, medical malpractice. Call the Joe Ferretti Law Office for a free consultation at 304-596-8854. All right, let's have some fun. Let's first just look at, at, at the team numbers, then we'll, ha- when we'll have the fun when we look at the individuals. Uh, first downs, Shepard 16, Mercyhurst 
only seven. As the Rams have controlled the time of possession, 19 minutes, 12 seconds to just 10.48 for Mercy Hurston. Look at the difference in plays. 44 plays for Shepard, 283 total yards, 27 plays for 139 yards for Mercy Hurst. I still look at the time of possession as that biggest stat in the first half. I, I, yeah, I, but I think they go hand in hand. If you obviously hold the ball more, you're going to run more plays. So I think uh, one leads to the other, but obviously you got to have time before you run those plays. So that's still my biggest stat of this first half. Usually what happens, though, you look at numbers like that and say you held the football for almost nine full minutes more than the other team. You ran 17 more plays, and you've got 283 yards to their 139. You're telling me you've got more than a five-point lead at the half, and that's what is hurting right now for this Rams team. Shall I take you back to last week? And now Shepard won almost every statistical category except for turnovers. That was it. Yes. They won everything, but and they even won turnovers technically. They got more than Ohio Dominican did, but it does. at the end of the day, only one stat on that page matters, and that is the score on the scoreboard at the end of the game. Shepard with 52 rushing yards on 15 attempts, 12 Rushing yards on nine attempts for Mercy Hurst. The Lakers throwing for 127. The Rams throwing for 231 yards. We look at penalties in the first half. Shepard six for 49 yards. Mercy Hurst just three for 25 yards. The Rams three of seven on third down conversions. Mercy Hurst one of six. Neither team going for it on fourth down. Can we have some fun now? Here we go. Let's take a look first at the rushing totals for Shepard. What do you got, Matt? I got Connor Jessup having a good day leading the way with nine carries for 20 yards total. Uh, Connor Jessup, he wore the number nine in a so random that would uniform. be Deontay Glover. There you that go. That has ran for 20 yards on nine carries. All right, then we have Trey Anderson who has two carries for 17 yards. Do you remember Trey Anderson's number back in the day? Trey Anderson was 30, wasn't he? Uh, I thought he was as well, which takes you to... That would be number 30 on the field, Mr. Ronnie Ronnie Brown. Brown. There you go. Remember, he came in late in that uh, first half and uh, busted off a nice run. So Brown is there. And then you get Patrick Griffin. I believe Patrick Griffin... Wore the number 22. There you go. Which would be Mr. Ty Hebron. There you go. 16 yards on three carries. And then uh, Tyson Bajan. Tyson Bajan wears number two. And that's him. Tyson (laughs) Bajan had a carry for minus a yard as he got sacked once in that first half. Bajan throwing the football. 22 of 29, 231 yards, two touchdowns, but, man, that costly interception. Yeah, back-to-back weeks where there's just been turnovers that have been forced. There's been throws that haven't necessarily need to be made, and he's, I think, forced them a little bit. All right, let's uh, look at the wide receivers. Uh, Billy Brown. Great to see him back in a Shepherd Ram uniform. All right, it's Dylan Brewer wearing that uh, 81 today, seven catches, 60 yards. James Gupton, the former linebacker. <laughs> He's actually Devin Phelps. 90 yards on six receptions and a touchdown. Yeah, and then uh, Matt Phillips, three catches for 18 yards. Phillips was 11, wasn't he? That's Cornish. That's Cornish, yeah, and then Alex Wetzel. So, uh, well, but it can't be DJ because DJ had a touchdown, and they don't have uh, a touchdown listed for our receiver with three catches for 18 yards. Either way, let's go to the other side where Garrett Owens has eight carries for 17 yards. Michael Lowry spelling the starter, Doug Altavilla. Altavilla went four of six for 21 yards. Lowry, seven of 11 for 106 yards and a touchdown. And his favorite target has been Austin Hence. He's got five grabs, 79 yards, and a score. And Clay Waldron, two catches for 23 yards. That is a look at our first half stats brought to you by Joe Ferretti Law Office. If you uh, have been involved in a vehicle accident, slip and fall, medical malpractice, call the Joe Ferretti Law Office at 304-596-8854 for a free consultation. It wraps up the WVU Medicine Halftime Show, and our second half is ready to get started. Mercyhurst Football. Hayden August Scriven approaches, gets away a nice high, deep end-over-end kick. 
Back on it along the far side, numbers at about the three-yard line is 23, Clay Waldron, and Waldron working up that far side gets out to the 19, but hit and taken down shy of the 20-yard line. And again, three men back to return. That really is something I'm not sure I've ever seen in a football game, or at least not often. Mercy Hurst getting the ball to start the second half. Let's see if the Ram defense can pick up where they left off. After that strong first half, giving up just 139 yards on 27 plays. That is roughly five yards a play. Did I get that right? That seems awfully, awfully. Seems high. Yeah, so let me try that one more time. Uh, yeah, five yards wow. per play. Sure didn't seem like that the way they're moving the football. Owens is the single set in the backfield, and Lowry drops the exchange from center and immediately gets drilled and taken down by the Ram defensive end, David Wilson. Yeah, good job by Wilson and Lowry. It's the second fumble we've seen from him so far in this game on that center exchange. Again, the backup quarterback going into the game, the starting quarterback, Doug Altavilla. It, he just broke the all-time passing record for yards, and immediately that next drive he's taken out, checked with some of the folks up here in the press box at halftime and not injured apparently was just yanked from the ball game so not sure whether there were some words said on the sideline and it was a disciplinary action type thing or what's going on down there on second down and 12 handoff going to owens looking for running room to the right and there is none a ram linebacker stepping up to force that play back inside looked to be uh, david Epperts, and then got some help from his friends as the tackle comes pretty much right back at the line of scrimmage the 17 no a loss of one to the 16 now as they set it down and it'll bring up a third down and 13. in that first half tough going for owens with 17 yards on eight carries he loses a yard here, and now a crucial third down. Mercyhurst one of six in that first half. Out of the gun, Lowry with a back to his right side. Has three receivers here to the near side. Throws over the middle and incomplete. What a great hit by the Rams' safety as Michael Blackman Herbert came up and met the receiver just as the football got there, knocking it away from Clay Waldron. Yeah, and you could tell he was timing up that hit perfectly, and that's just what he did. It was He timed it perfectly as we have a injured Laker down on the field and a flag back by the line of scrimmage. Holding on the offense, penalty is declined, the indication from our head referee, and the lineman continues to remain down on the play. Looks like it's Freddie Pantaleon. That was the offensive lineman down, number 66. Yeah, 6'1", 265. He is a redshirt junior and now is to his feet and will walk off under his own power. So It looks like maybe that right shoulder, he's dangling that one down a bit and seems to be walking fine. It's maybe a shoulder injury on that right shoulder. So the punting unit will come on in that first half. Hunter Brendan Cole had four kicks for an average of 39.8 yards per kick. Waiting for it at his own two. He's got it and gets that kick out of there. Low line drive. That one's going to take a bounce and into the hands of the Ram return man. That is Zane Lewis who gets to that far sideline and goes out of bounds at the 45-yard line in Mercyhurst territory. So that punt covering just about... Uh, 38 yards and then a nice return and the Rams will have the football outstanding field position 13 17 to play in the third the first Ram possession of this second half see what adjustments they've been able to make they've moved the football they've just got to be able to finish Tyson Bajant lining up in the shotgun formation has a back to his left side. Gives that little touch pass to a man in motion. That's Dylan Brewer who came from right to left. Brewer outside the numbers on that far side. Picks up five to the 40. Yeah, we saw that play a couple times last week where they send that receiver in motion and Bajan doesn't even give a handoff. It's more just a redirection, a quick pat down into the arms of that receiver in motion. And it's been pretty successful each time they've used it. 
On second down and five, Bajan taking that shotgun snap, play action pass, looking near side, and Devin Phelps comes back to make the catch at the 25, takes on a tackler, picks up five extra yards, finally forced out of bounds, mark it, it looks like at the 19-yard line. It's a good route run by Devin Phelps. He had the safety thinking he was going to bite inside. The speed of Devin Phelps, you have to give him that little bit of cushion or he's going to run right by you, and a good job there to cut back on the curl, and he was open by about five yards to the closest defender. Uh, he is off to a very good start to this season. Ram football, first down and 10 after their 17th first down of the game. And I'm sure James Gupton loving that he's getting all the credit for this one in the stat book. On first down and 10 from the 19, Bajan to throw, back near corner of the end zone, looking for Alex Wetzel, but throws that one out of bounds. Just good coverage downfield that time by Mercyhurst. Yeah, and a good miss by Tyson Bajan. Obviously, you don't want to leave that one short of Jump ball with the tight end isn't the worst thing in the world, but don't want that opportunity to have a second interception on the day. So from the 19 of Mercy Hurst, a second and 10 for the Rams, looking to that far side, getting that play call signaled in to them. The Rams will keep Wetzel out there as a tight end. He'll line up as a tight slot to the left. Two receivers out that way as well. Single receiver to the near side is Sterling Dudney. There is the snap and the play action and the catch made by the wide receiver out on that far side, and that is uh, Josh Pulse who is able to get a block and get down inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. That's a pickup of seven. Boy, we saw 11 different receivers catch passes last week in the opener, and Matt, it's continuing in this one as the Rams are getting a bunch of guys involved. And Pulse has been in on a couple plays so far today. Moore's a blocking wide receiver and got called for a penalty earlier in the game, but this is the first time we've seen him put this, his hands on the football. And again, a lot of young guys going in and out of the Shepard Ram receiving core right now is a couple of last second changes yeah. being made is four seconds on the play clock and Bajan does hurry up and get the play off. Handoff going to Deontay Glover finds a little opening up the middle, pushes his way inside the 10. Is he going to get the first down at the 9 or not? Yes, he does. I wasn't sure if they were going to put the nose of that football on the nine or not, and if they didn't, then it was going to be a fourth and short, but uh, he does pick up what he needed, three yards, and the Rams have a first down. And the initial spot would not have been a first down. That was a good job by the offensive line, keeping their feet running, and a good job by Glover, just putting that shoulder down, protecting the football, and fighting for those extra couple of yards. Now on first down, the handoff is to Glover running left, finds a little cutback lane, and it closes very quickly. Uh, the big uh, defensive lineman, Aaron Thompson Jr., got some help there from uh, Jake Tarasovich, and the two made the big hit to bring him down at, let's see, the seven-yard line for just a two-yard gain. And that is Glover's bread and butter, being able to start to the outside, and he lifts that cutback lane. He's doing it very well on the first drive, but a good job by Mercyhurst defense to adjust to that in the first time they were able to come over to the bench, and they've been pretty solid closing those cutback lanes ever since. Bajan taking the shotgun snap, wants to throw, dumps it over the middle, and the tight end D.J. Cornish in the back of the end zone pulls it in for the Shepherd Ram touchdown. And Cornish wide open, a, a late defender coming over trying to just have any shot of getting their hand on the football, but D.J. Cornish standing wide open in the back of the end zone, just making his own path and nobody really picking him up at all on a good throw by Tyson Bajan, just lobbing it into the back of the end zone. Well, he hit Cornish for a 17-yard score in the first half. Now connects with the big tight end from seven yards out, and the Rams add to the lead. On to attempt the extra point. Hayden August Scriven. This kick is up, and this kick is through. So the PAT good, and with 10 minutes, 10 seconds to play in the third quarter, we'll take a break with Shepard now out in front, 22 to 10. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. If you have been injured in an auto accident or due to someone's negligence and you want to know what your rights are, 
Call Ferretti Law Office at 264-8505 to discuss your claim for free. Attorney Joe Ferretti is prepared to answer your questions and explain your options. Put Joe Ferretti's legal experience and history of proven results in your corner to fight the bullies from the insurance companies. At Ferretti Law Office, we're here to help you win. We'll give you the drive summary after the ensuing kickoff as Hayden August Scriven approaches and gets it away. Deep kick. This one will go into and out of the end zone as that one hit directly on the out-of-bounds sideline halfway through the end zone. That is a touchback. Mercyhurst will have it at their own 25. Our drive summary brought to you by Mike Folk for Governor, accountable, ethical, responsible, paid for by Mike Folk for Governor. Seven plays, 45 yards in three minutes and seven seconds. A seven-yard touchdown pass. Tyson Bajant going to D.J. Cornish, and the Rams lead 22-10 to 10 as Hayden August Scriven added the PAT. Second offensive possession of quarter number three for Mercy Hurst. They went three and out the first time they had it, and this is a chance for the Rams to really kind of take charge in this football game. Another stop and another score on the board begins to create some separation. Back out there at quarterback, Michael Lowry, the freshman, has a back to his left side. That's Owens. Brings a man in motion and hands him the football. On that jet sweep, Cortez Watson, and no place for Watson to go as the Rams string that play out to the sideline. Chris Lane in there on the stop, along with the Rams, uh, Antonio Fox, mark it at the 29, a four-yard pickup. Yeah, Watson nowhere to go, but is still able to uh, scrape away four yards on that play. It was really the second effort made after contact. Didn't go down, was able to keep his feet running and lunge forward at the very end of that play to get an extra yard, a yard and a half. That's where those five yards of play are coming in, those plays you don't think they're going anywhere. And they gain a four, like it's nothing. Dustin Schof in there as a fullback as they lined up in the I formation and the pass far side in and out of the hands of Austin Hens. Pretty good throw that time from Michael Lowry. May have floated just a little bit and Hens may have been thinking about getting the feet in on the sideline. Didn't quite look it in. Yeah, I think Hens was trying to figure out where his feet were going to be and whether he could have time once he caught the football to stop and try to plant back up field. Didn't watch it all the way in. Uh, with a couple of incompletions here in this second half. Lowry now 7 of 13 for 106 yards. And a crucial third and six coming now for Mercyhurst from their own 29. Uh, back to each side of the quarterback. That's Watson to his right, Owens to his left. Lowry with that shotgun snap. Pocket collapses. He steps up, coming near side, makes that throw a little high and through the hands of his intended target, Cordell O'Brien. Listed as a wide out build, a little more like a tight end. He's 6'3", 220. Incomplete, and the punting unit comes on. And a good play by Blackman Herbert there as well, the defensive back number seven. Not sure if he was able to get a little bit of a fingertip on it, even if he didn't. The hand's going up right in front of the receiver, not face guarding at all, but just making it harder for that receiver to bring it all the way in. Once again, Brendan Cole on to punt. Had a punt of 38 yards earlier in this third quarter. Lewis back deep again for the Rams. Snap back, a little bit of a controlled roll, a rugby-style kick. It's going to bounce at the Ram 45. Take a nice mercy. Hurst roll down inside the 30, and will be touched in at roughly the 29-yard line. So that punt will cover 42 yards with no return, and the Rams will have their second possession of the second half with a 22-10 lead and 9-11 to play in the third. And Mercyhurst taking 59 seconds off the clock. Really not running the football at all anymore because, quite frankly, it hadn't worked for him all game, all, day, all game, if I can get that word out. And Garrett Owens has been not a factor at all in this ball game so far. What was one of your keys to the game in the pregame show? I believe it was that the front seven for Shepard had to fill the gaps and really apply pressure to that run game for Mercyhurst. They've done that. What did Mercyhurst need to do? Control, control the tempo and control the clock, and right now they yeah. haven't. First and ten for the Rams from their own 29. Bajan out of the pistol formation, takes the snap, hands it off. Ty Hebron straight ahead running. will pick up about three yards. Good job of one of the big guys up front. Making sure I get the right number. That's R.J. Tillman, 6'3". He's three. Uh, let me make sure I get this right. Yeah, 330. The freshman defensive lineman, 6'3", 330. Decent-sized human being. Yeah, not bad. That is a unit. You're not moving him out of there very much. <laughs> 
Mark that football out close to the 30, I call it the 32, so a second down and seven after a gain of three for Hebron. Hebron now up to 19 yards on four carries. Back to throw. Bajan, nice reverse pivot to avoid some pressure. He throws far side in the pass, incomplete. But hang on, a penalty marker is down in an area where we may have a hold or a pass interference. Wouldn't surprise if it was a hold on number nine, John Halosiato. He was uh, trying to Greg guard Leonard. Greg Leonard, yeah. yeah. See if that is the call. I've yet to see it. Looks like they're just setting the football down, still waiting for that penalty to... Yep. So it's a 10-yard penalty on the defensive hold. It'll come from the prior spot, and that will be the fourth penalty now for 35 yards called on the Lakers here in this ball game. And it was a penalty that wasn't needed. Lociato getting a hold of Greg Leonard, and with Tyson Bajan being on the move, I think he was just trying to get it in the vicinity of a receiver. I'm not sure that Leonard is going to be able to make that play based on where that football was thrown regardless. First and 10 from the 42. Screen pass far side caught by Dylan Brewer. Nice block by Greg Leonard. All but a late flag comes in. They're going to call a hold. And another flag comes in late on the play as well as Brewer able to get close to what he needed for the first down. But now we'll check and see whether they both saw the same thing or whether there's two separate penalties. Well, the first one's going to be a hold. Yeah, they both saw the same thing. Yeah. They now put both flags together at the 45-yard line. So after Greg Leonard was held, on the very next play, he gets called for holding. And that's a holding that's going to get called every time. And you're right around the play, and all of a sudden the defender going to make the tackle completely twists his body around. That's an easy call for the officials to make. So it'll be first down all over again with the football now back at the Ram 36-yard line. About 16 yards to go for a first. First and 16 after the hold and Bajan to throw. Deep along that far side and overshoots his intended target. That pass carrying Alex Wetzel a couple of steps out of bounds. Good coverage on that side by Keith Brickman. Yeah, good job by Wetzel, though, outrunning Brickman. Uh, Brickman, a defensive back, and getting beat up that far sideline by the tight end. A penalty the first on the Rams in the second half, by the way. So seven penalties, 59 yards unofficially on Shepard. Second and 16 coming from their own 36. Bajan again to throw, looking far side. A quick out pattern, and Evan Phelps brings it in but was out of bounds. Yeah, that pass carried him into the Ram bench. Pretty simple call on that one, and Shepard will face a third down and 16. Yeah, I think at the very end, Evan Phelps trying to kind of time his feet so he can make the jump correctly, but just couldn't get that left foot down, had to go up with the right foot, and that left foot coming down out of bounds. Shepard, four of eight on third down conversions. That's 50%, very good rate. Let's see if they can get one here on a third and long. Third and 16, Bajan to throw, has some time, deep along the near side, and overthrows the intended target. Trying to get it to Dylan Brewer, but Brewer had cut his pattern towards the middle of the field instead of turning down the near side hash mark. Yeah, Brewer running more of a post route, if anything. And he saw where Bajan was going with that football. Those, these are two guys that not only have worked together since both being at Shepard, but Brewer and Bajan, both Martinsburg Bulldogs in high school, and Brewer helping uh, Bajan throughout high school and running routes with him and all that fun stuff. So these are guys that have ran a few routes before on and off the game day field. Noah Pohl in the first half, four punts for an average of 37, a long of 42 and three that he put out inside of the 20-yard line. He awaits the snap and gets this kick away, and that one's going to bounce and pretty much die right there. It hit at the 24 and will be marked at that 24-yard line. So the punt covering about 34 yards with no return. We've got 740 to play here in quarter number three. 22 to 10. Shepard out in front. So the Rams got a touchdown on their first possession of the second half. This second possession results in a punt. And now Mercyhurst with their third possession of this second half and still looking for a first down. And so far both teams have abandoned the run game over the last couple of series for each. Neither team doing it effectively on first down, and penalties have really forced uh, forced first and long, second and long, even third and long, so it makes that run game even harder. 
All right, it looks like we have the return of Doug Altavilla back out there at quarterback. He's going to take that snap and hand it off, and Owens has no place to go. Very quickly wrapped up on the play by the Ram linebacker. That's David Eppard. And you got to wonder what that situation was. Altavilla missed about a quarter and a half, almost two quarters of today's action. And from, Lau, we're doing a pretty good job yeah. as the backup, keeping them in this football game, but no injury, and you got to wonder if that's some sort of disciplinary action based on events going on on the sideline. On second down and 12 now from their own 22, and that was a two-yard loss on that last carry for Owens. Back to throw, out to Villa, looking near side. Let's that pass go. Grab made over the middle, out to the Ram 45 into the midfield stripe. Able to bring him down was a Shepherd's Chris Jones, and on the reception was Cordell O'Brien, the big wideouts. Tim Womack and Donnell Howard running into each other, so it was a great job by Chris Jones coming from the far side of the field and making that tackle. It would have been a foot race and would have been probably inside the 30 before the receivers brought down. Just the eighth first down of this game for Mercyhurst. A big 28-yard pass completion. First and 10 from the midfield stripe. High backfield behind the quarterback as Altavilla goes under center. Play action, dumps it in the flat on this left side. That's the fullback with the catch, getting inside the Ram 40 and taken down at about the 37-yard line. The catch made by Dustin Schof and brought down on the play by Donnell Howard. Good job of field by the tight end number 86, Joe Carbone. Allowed a few extra yards upfield. So that football gets set at the 37 in Ram territory, so 13 yards on that pass completion. And back-to-back first down plays for Mercyhurst. 28 yards and 13 yards. On first and 10, the Ram nose guard it jumps early. He shoves the center right back into the backfield. And the question is, did Aaron Smith move that football at all? Nope. Hey, you're not, not going to get that call an awful lot when the center's still holding on to the football and you plow him over. Yeah, but he can flinch. He can do all kinds of things with that football in there. Eight penalties, 64 yards now for Shepard. That'll make it first down and five and move the football down to that Ram 32. If he flinches the football enough to get that nose tackle to move, the line judge is looking right down the line of scrimmage. He should He's usually going to see it. Here is the snap and the handoff. Owens coming near side. No place for him to go. Wow, very quickly wrapped up by the Ram defender. Yeah, good job, Juwan Addison, filling that hole. It was going to be a cutback lane, if anything, but he didn't wait for that cutback to happen. He attacked the runner. Outstanding play, and it ends up being a loss of a yard back to the Ram 33. So second down and six coming. I now have just 13 yards on 11 carries today for Garrett Owens. He's the deep man in the eye. Out to Villa, out from under center. Play action pass, rolling far side, throwing towards the end zone and overshoots the target. That was Clay Waldron who was trying to get it to, but credit that Ram front as they put the pressure on, forcing the errant pass. And I don't think Waldron was at all expecting that football to come his way. I think he had given up on that route until turning around seeing the football come his way and then had to throw on the afterburners to try to get to it, but the ball well overthrown. Crucial down coming, third down and a six. Just one of eight on those third down conversions from the Ram 33. This might be third and fourth down. I was getting ready to ask you if this is third or this is fourth down territory at the 33-yard line. A little bit too long for a D2 field goal, I might think, but in that in-between area of the field. On third and six, it's a deep slam. Far side catch made to the 10, to the 5, and reaching out to the goal line. He's in. It's Austin Hentz, the senior wideout who pulls in the pass and goes 33 yards for the score. Hey, Matt, they're not going to have to go for it on fourth down or even think about having to go for it. Great throw over the middle by Alta Villa, and even better effort at the end by Austin Hens, not only hitting on the Jets right as he got to about the five-yard line, but also the full extension to get that ball over the goal line before his knee hit down the knee. Looked like it was going to be down at about the two-yard line, but fully extended, was able to get the football over the goal line. 
Altavilla with his second touchdown pass on the season as he had one last week. Hence, with his second touchdown of the day, his third on the season. And a two-point conversion attempt, and it looks like they will get it. Yes, the hands go up from the officials, and that two-point conversion is a good one as the quarterback takes it in himself. I'm not really sure the, the logic behind that two-point conversion as it'll make it 18-22. to 22. It doesn't get him within a field goal. As No, okay, that was actually the touchdown. They did what? get together and call him down at the two-yard line. I didn't the, even notice. The original call, yeah, I'm with you. The original call was that it was a touchdown by the line judge coming or the back judge coming in. There and you that go. That was a quarterback sneak for a touchdown from the two-yard line where that knee went down by Altavilla, and now the extra point up and good. It is down 22-17 is Shepard. Could have swore I saw hands I, go they up. Went up I'm the with you. They definitely went up. Pass completion. Well, either way, Schaefer comes in and adds that PAT. So that was the quarterback sneak for the touchdown. Take back what I said earlier. And for Altavilla, he'll have his first rushing touchdown of the season. The extra point up and good, and we'll take a 30-second break. We've got 413 remaining in quarter number three and Shepard out in front 22-17. For over 36 years, Green Tree Realty has been helping the Shepherdstown community find a place to call home. Our friendly team is ready to help you navigate the market and is your trusted resource complete with a wealth of experience and local knowledge. For those looking to buy land, commercial property, or a home, we'll help you find the perfect fit. From staging and negotiations to closing and beyond, we're with you every step of the way. Hello, I'm Michael Falk, a lifelong resident of West Virginia, husband and father. I worked my way through school and life with honesty, hard work, and determination. These principles have served me well in athletics, education, farming, and aviation, and have carried me through years of fighting for a more accountable government at the local and state level. These same core principles will allow me to serve you well in Charleston. I believe true leadership is sticking your neck out for right, even when it goes against the establishment. You can help me put principle over politics and beat the odds one more time. Brown, Brown working towards the far side hash mark. Trying to get to that 20-yard line, met and driven backwards, and they're going to mark him at the 19-yard line. A little pushing at the end of that play. All right, the scoring summary, a service of Mike Folk for Governor. Learn more at Folk, the number four, WV.com. For Mercyhurst, uh, let's mark that down now as a seven-play drive that will cover 76 yards, and that particular drive going to take just about three and a half minutes off the clock. It was a one-yard touchdown run for Doug Altavilla. You sure about it this time? Uh, well, that's that. yes, I'm sure. So Ram football, big possession from their own 19. Handoff going to the tailback. Met in the hole. No gain on the play. Should be Deontay Glover back out there on that carry and helping to make that stop. Aaron Thompson, the big uh, sophomore defensive lineman, filling that hole. All right now it's looking like whichever team is going to throw the football the most efficiently in the rest of the third quarter and fourth quarter is going to win the ball game. Neither team can run the football very well to start the second half. Bajan awaiting the shotgun snap. Looks like the blitz might be coming. It does. Bajan has some time. Slings it out near side, and D.J. Cornish the catch to the 30 and the 35. Takes a hit and bumped out of bounds. Good defensive play by Jake Tarasovich. Mark it all the way out to the 38-yard line, and that gained good for 19 and a Ram first down. Yeah, good job by Bajan. Moving the pocket a little bit to this near side, and a DJ Cornish blocking for a few seconds in, having a good release and immediately looking for the football. Good job by Bajan, knowing where he was going to be and finding him quickly. Got the Rams up to 20 first downs now. Back to throw Bajan on first down, has some time. Dumps it off, and a nice catch by Deontay Glover along the near sideline. He'll move it out to about the 42-yard line. And right now the secondary and those linebackers in coverage for Mercyhurst doing a very good job. Nothing opened on this drive so far down the field. Both those catches so far by Cornish and Deontay Glover have been a blocking, and then they're releasing just right into the flats, and that's when the only thing Tyson Bajan's been able to find. 
Pagent up to 297 yards, 29 of 40 passing in this one. Handoff going to Glover, coming near side, puts his hand on the back of a blocker, gets met at the 45, and bulls his way forward. He's out to the 48 and should have a ramp first down. Yeah, that blocker is Ostro coming through the yeah. hole. Which Ostro? How Eric, that would make be. that Eric. Evan Ostro, the center. Eric Ostro is the tackle. A gain of six. Moving Glover to 31 yards on 13 carries and another Ram first down, unofficially their 21st on the ball game. From the 48-yard line, back to throw, Bajent, and hits the slot receiver, streaking straight down the field. Dylan Brewer pulls it in to the 25 of Mercyhurst. And we're having a competition here as to who's the most influential receiver so far in this game. Devin Phelps having a whale of a game, but so is Dylan Brewer. We got Bajan up to 324 yards with that pass completion. And I tell you, Brewer has had a coming out party in this one. Sixth play of the possession coming from the 25 in Mercyhurst territory. And the Mercyhurst defense is calling for a timeout, a 30-second break. And then we return. We have 2.03 remaining on the third quarter. Clock and Shepard leading 22-17. Here's to the grown-ups. Your car is now your office. Stage, nursery. Shh, sorry, insuring it shouldn't be a headache. Erie, number one in the nation for highest satisfaction with the auto insurance purchase experience six years in a row. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent, not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person like this. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. Erie Insurance. Once again, thanks to our sponsors supporting our coverage of Shepherd Ram football on TV10, Hagerstown Ford, Panhandle Dumpsters, Marius Group, and Ameriprise Financial, Joe Ferretti Law Office, Green Tree Realty, Mike Folk for Governor, and our title sponsor, Smallwood Small Insurance. Big opportunity here for the Shepherd Rams right now, holding on to a five point lead. That's what it was at the intermission, 15 to 10, each team with a second-half touchdown, and the Rams looking for another. From the 25, Bajan, just as he was being hit, letting it go over the middle, throws into the end zone, and no one is there. Dylan Brewer, who he was looking for, but Brewer was back around the five as that one went about five yards deep in the end zone. And Bajan, lucky, got enough on that football, or as much on that football as he did. Two safeties waiting back there. He underthrows that by another yard or two. That's probably intercepted in the end zone. Good job just putting everything he had on that football. His pressure was coming from the backside. Second down and 10 coming after that incompletion. Bajan 30 of 42, 324 yards, a couple of touchdowns and a pick. Handoff, Deontay Glover met in the hole and quickly spun down. Joseph Scro, that's S-C-R-O, 6'2", Richard Jr. linebacker, made a nice tackle. Glover going to pick up two down to the 23. Eighth play of the possession coming in a third down and eight. The Rams four of nine on third down conversions. Big third down opportunity here. Two receivers each way. Glover to the right of the quarterback. Now Glover comes in motion near side. Bajan to throw. Far side quick out. In and out of the hands of Dylan Brewer. I think he was thinking about turning up field before he brought it in. 100% because his body started to twist before he even made that catch. So wasn't looking at all the way in. And I was going to ask you before that play started whether this is four down territory for Shepard. The wind at the back of the Rams right now. So I thought it may be a chance for Hayden August Scrivens to get a field goal in and Shepard to take an eight point lead. But they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth down and eight from the 23 of Mercyhurst. The snap is back. Bajan some time. Throws over the middle. Diving attempt, but off the fingertips of his intended target, Michael Freeman. It's incomplete, and a turnover on downs. Bajan rushed on that one again. Good job by the front seven of Mercyhurst on third and fourth down, getting pressure on Tyson Bajan, forcing him to make throws that haven't been as accurate as most of his throws have been today. And that is a big stop on fourth down for Mercyhurst. And I think you look at the momentum right now, and uh, I think they have it. Their starting quarterback comes back in, takes them on a touchdown drive, and a big fourth down stop. See what they can do on offense here. The Shepard Ram defense can come up with a stop equally as big. Maybe that was the strategy all along. Take out your starting quarterback and then bring him back in to lead the comeback. That's a big gamble. 
from their own 23 on a first down and 10. Mercyhurst having a little bit of trouble getting everyone positioned. Three receivers here to the wide side left. Play clock down to four, down to three, down to two. Altavilla taking that snap, looking near side, and throws, and incomplete. Oh, and a penalty marker comes flying in. Two penalty markers as Nick Altavilla took a huge hit at the end of the play as the Rams, Antonio Fox, came up and put the hit on him. Boneheaded play by Antonio Fox. No, I mean, that ball is Altavilla's not going for that football at all. He's not making an effort on that play. The, the, our, our line judge is talking with our umpire and our field judge along with the referee, and I think they're going to question whether they call this or not. I mean, the hit was very much as the football was going up over his head. A defensive back coming, I, you know, you, you've got to play that play all the way through. Let's see what we're going to get. It looks like they will call the personal foul. Hit. They call a hit to the head, and that's not right. I didn't see a hit to the head no, at all. A, it was a hit to the chest area, or at least the shoulder. And I believe, is that an ejection? They're call, I think they're calling targeting they on did. that. They did. They just called targeting, and Antonio Fox is going to exit this ball game. it looks like. The one rule about targeting, and we talked to Coach Ernie McCook at Media Day about this, that is a reviewable play at the end of the game. So Antonio Fox is going to be gone for this entire ball game. I don't think he realized he got ejected. He's still on the field and has to be told to go off. But this can be reviewed at the end of the game, and Fox could come back next week, so this doesn't necessarily mean a suspension. Shepard now up to nine penalties, 79 yards as that football gets moved all the way out to the 38, back to throw, pass coming near side, and it is caught along the hash marks by the wide receiver, Clay Waldron, and Waldron will have the first down as he will get into Ram territory, and now a Shepard... ...a little slow to get up. That's Donnell Howard who remains down. All right, Matt, let's go back to that targeting play. I don't think, I'm with you, I do not think he was targeting. I don't think it was a hit to the head. I thought it was good contact, uh, definitely to the chest and the shoulder area, but not uh, on board with the targeting call. But I just, I, I think that's a play that doesn't need to be made. I get you're coming in. I get it. Football's a, a violent game. I get that. I love hard hits as much as the next man. Uh, but Altaville is not going for that football. He, he clearly knows that's going over his head. He's not making an effort for that football. I just don't know if you're Antonio Fox, if that's a play that you need to make. I think at this point in the game, you let that go out of bounds. Even if you make contact with him, I just don't think – I think you got to realize the moment. And even if he's going up to make a play on that football, hey, wrap up and make, make a tackle. I just think at that point in the game – that's not the hit you need to make. Uh, it looks like just a cramp for Donnell Howard, who is to his feet and very stiff-legged as he makes his way towards that uh, far Ram sideline. I don't know. Sometimes you're asking uh, these players to, you know, who are flying around at, at high rates of speed to make split-second decisions, and that's exactly what that was. you got to make that decision in that instant, in that moment. Am I going to follow through and hit this guy, or am I going to, take it that pass is overthrown and let him alone it was a tough play it hurt the rams it was a personal foul the player was ejected and now you move on first down and 10 from the 47 in ram territory mercy hurst football out to Villa, brings a man in motion, out from under center, controlled roll to that far side, looking, 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 has some room, and he's going to run with the football and slides before going out of bounds. So the clock should continue to run, although they do stop it with 48.9 seconds. That clock should be running. I'm I was going to say, he slid out of bounds yeah, after he, a three-yard gain. It's running now. Okay. I guess they were setting the chains back up in the football. Had to set the football, so yeah, it is running. Yeah, because he gave himself up in bounds before sliding out of bounds. So out to Villa now, two carries, four yards, including a touchdown on the last drive after we got an initial indication of a touchdown on the 33-yard pass before that. Alta Villa took it in from a yard out. 22-17, the Rams with the lead, but Mercyhurst with a drive going. 20 seconds and counting in the third quarter. Alta Villa, play action pass, dumping it off near side, and that pass swatted down right at the line of scrimmage. That was a blitzing linebacker, Kyle Smith, who got a hand up to knock it down. Incomplete, and we'll bring up a big third down and seven. 
Uh, if you're Shepard, you got to get off the field here. Force a punch. That'll give your offense the football back and see if you can gain a little momentum back. Right now, momentum on the side of the Lakers. 15.9 seconds on a stopped third quarter clock. On third down and seven. Two receivers each way. Austin Hens starts in motion but stays on that far side. Out to Villa to throw. Near side. Pass tipped and incomplete. Chris Lane getting into the passing lane on that pass intended for Cordell O'Brien. Knocks it down incomplete. And, yep, the punting unit does come on. Good defensive stand for Shepard, especially after the penalty, the ejection, uh, to stay focused, uh, do what needed to be done, and force a punt by Mercyhurst. Now the job of Brendan Cole, try to pin the Rams deep. Back in that first half, put one out inside the 20-yard line. That was down at the 6, now trying to do it again. Line of scrimmage, roughly that Ram 44. Punt is out of there, end over end kick. Fair catch being called for, and Lewis pulls in that fair catch, and we've got a penalty marker down way behind the play, back at the 30-yard line. Football is going to be spotted, it looks like, pretty much right at the 10. I'm not sure what this penalty is going to be. Well, actually, the 9-yard line, so 35 yards on the punt. Holding on the Rams. Not sure where the hold was based on what that flag came from about the five yard line. And all the way out to the thirty yard line. Had to throw, but I'm not sure what he was seeing on the penalty. Oh boy. Shepard uh having some mistakes that are very costly here today. Ten penalties, eighty four yards, an unofficial total right now for the Rams. They'll only lose about five on that hold because it's half the distance to the goal as the football is going to get set down at their own four-yard line. First and ten, Shepard, and just five seconds left on this third-quarter clock. Pistol for Majin, Bajan out of the gun, taking that snap, handing it off. That's Glover coming near side, a little bit of a cutback lane. Falls forward across the five and out to the six-yard line. That should be the final play of quarter number three, and it is. Don't go away. Back with the fourth quarter of action from here in Erie with Shepard leading Mercyhurst 22-17. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and bulk pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. for what's next or to plan ahead we're here brown funeral home a legacy of service since 1880 matt miller along with matt crawford we've got caleb falero at the studio eric sterick and john alderton running our tv 10 cameras and our on-site producers we are heading to quarter number four at tulio field at saxon stadium in erie Pennsylvania. Matt, we'll be right back up this way, a little further south and southeast next week. Uh, Clarion welcoming the Shepherd Rams to town. That'll be a 1 o'clock kickoff, our pregame 1230. And uh, the Mercyhurst Lakers hitting the road for the first time this year. They'll be at Bloomsburg. That also a kickoff in the afternoon, 2 p.m. for that one. 
Here we go, quarter number four getting underway. Shepard football with a 22-17 lead facing second and eight from their own six-yard line. Play action pass, deep far side. Bajan looking for Devin Phelps. He makes that grab out beyond the 40 and carries a tackler ahead near the midfield stripe. Where are they going to set it? Mark it at the 48. And Devin Phelps is showing his pure speed, beating two defenders, not only the quarterback covering him off the line, but also the safety coming over for help. And, and just the pure speed, and Devin Phelps does not look nicked up to me at all today. He's flying out of his mind. 31 completions, 45 attempts, 366 yards for Bajant. First and 10 for the Rams from their own 48. That's how you get out of the shadow of your own goal line. Bajan pressured, running near side, slides down at the 46-yard line. That's the 46 in Mercyhurst territory. So a gain of just about six yards, and the Rams will face a second down and four. Power pistol. McCook out there now is the fullback. Brown, the deep man in that power pistol eye. There is the quick throw far side. That's Dudney with the catch on that wide receiver screen, getting a block from Dylan Brewer. Dudney moves down close to the 43. So a gain of four or so yards. We'll see what the Rams will face next. They need to keep it in the power pistol, which it looks like they're doing with McCook staying in. Is that blocking fullback to the near side? Give the ball to Deontay Glover. Establish the run. Or run it off tackle. Or run it up. I don't care what you do, where you run it, but pound the football and establish the run here. Get a fresh set of downs and milk some time off the clock. Third down and a long one and the handoff to Deontay Glover, and he got met right at the line of scrimmage. He didn't get it. There was no push at all that time by the Ram offensive line, and now the punting unit has to come on. I love the play call. Just couldn't get any push up front. The Mercyhurst defense did a good job of maintaining the line of scrimmage and really creating a new line of scrimmage and not allowing the blockers to get upfield or Deontay Glover to get upfield, and Shepard's going to punt it away. I guess too close to midfield to go for it here. Yeah, I think so as well. An opportunity to hopefully have Noah Pohl pin him deep. Pohl will await the snap at his own 43. It's back. Drops the point down and sends that kind of end-over-end kick that will be caught right on the 10-yard line by Cortez Watson. And that punt will cover 33 yards, but yet another punt inside the opponent's 20. Man, I think that Pat McAfee would have a field day at this game today. <laughs> Punters and kickers doing very well, especially in these windy conditions. I mean, looking at the flag right now next to the scoreboard here at Saxon Stadium. It has been windy all day. The third quarter, for the most part, a little less windy, but picking up now in quarter number four. Now this Ram defense going to have to make another stop from their own 10-yard line. A lot of field in front of this Mercy Hurst offense, down 22-17. High backfield behind the quarterback. Out from under center, he wants to throw. Out to Villa deep along the near side, and penalty marker is down, and we may have pass interference. That ball is uncatchable. There's no way that is pass interference. That ball was thrown five yards out of bound. No way that should be pass interference. Cortez Chase Irvin listed on our roster wearing that number eight. The officials going to get together and talk about it. No. Absolutely not. That ball is uncatchable, thrown five yards out of bounds. The first row of players on the sideline. You want to go with illegal contact, maybe, but that is not pass interference. That ball is uncatchable. That's 10 yards that they mark off on that penalty, bringing the football out to the 20-yard line. And looking back now for Shepard, 11 penalties, 94 yards, an unofficial number. So first down now from their own 20-yard line. Doug Altavilla started this game and gave way to the freshman quarterback Michael Lowry. And now Altavilla back out there has played well since returning. Back in the pocket, flushed, coming near side, finds an open receiver. The catch made by Waldron down the near sideline into Ram territory and finally taken down by Chris Jones, the defensive back at the Shepard. 35-yard line. How about a gain of 45 yards? Waldron wide open. Well, what a play made by Alta Villa. A moving from the far side back to this near side on the run, having to move up in the pocket. Then while on the run, still throwing backwards a bit, not fully across the field, but still throwing back across his body and delivering a dime of a throw. 
He's got up, Waldron wide open on that play. He's up to nine completions, 14 attempts, 155 yards. First and 10 from the Ram, 35. Out to Villa under center. I backfield behind him, brings a man in motion. That's Nick out to Villa heading to that far side. Puts two receivers that way. Play action pass, and the throw near side. Catch made by the fullback. Taken down on the play by the Rams, Michael Blackman Herbert. The catch made by Dustin Schof down to the six-yard line. And right now, Altavilla making all the difference in the world in this passing game. Lowry it didn't do bad, but you can see the clear difference in the quarterback change over these last couple of drives from Marcy Hurst. Well-conceived play as they got it to their fullback out of the backfield. First down, goal to go from that Ram six-yard line. Shepard gave up a late touchdown last week in that loss against Ohio Dominican. Don't want to let that happen again. Let's see if the defense can make a stand. Still plenty of time in this one, 11-10 in quarter number four, and Mercyhurst burns their second time out. They'll have just one remaining as we finish out this ball game. Let's take a 30-second break and then return to Saxon Stadium with Shepard in front of Mercyhurst, 22-17. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords. Financing from 0%. Parsons' goal of financing for all. And Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. I don't go anywhere. Could be an exciting finish here. 22-17. Shepard with the lead, but Mercyhurst knocking at the door. A first down, goal to go coming from the Ram six-yard line. Single set in the backfield is going to be Dustin Schof, the fullback, who caught the pass to get him down to this territory. Here's a fade pattern. Back far corner of the end zone, and the pass in can plate. Looking to get that one to Austin Hence, and good coverage out there by the Rams. Again, that is Cortez Chase Irvin listed on the roster wearing number eight. He's listed as a wide receiver, a freshman. So unless there's been a number change, the young man out there playing DB, not wide out, and uh, making the play. Second down, goal to go from that Ram six-yard line. Do you go back to the ground game at all? They've got the eye formation with Garrett Owens, their leading tailback. As the deep man in that eye, they hand him the football off the right side of the line. He's to the goal line, falls forward. No, he didn't get in. Our line judge from the near side racing in, saying the knee went down at the one-yard line, a five-yard gain, third down, goal to go, coming from the one. Lucky for Shepard. I thought he was laying on top of his own player and was able to reach that football across, apparently the knee down at the one-yard line. See what Shepard's defense can do here. This is clearly four down territory. There's no way you don't go for third and one and fourth and one if you don't get this one. You've got to imagine you're going to see that I formation one more time. I think you see what you saw a couple drives ago, two touchdowns ago, that quarterback, quarterback sneak. sneak. No reason to take that ball more than one yard away from the line of scrimmage. Out to Villa up under center, awaiting that snap. He's got it. Yep, he's going to try it. And nope, they'll say he's down inside the one, did not get in. So the Rams were thinking the same thing that you were thinking, Matt. And I think if you're Mercyhurst, you line up and do it again. It's a good stop by Shepard. That is hard to do to stop a guy that's only got to get less than a yard. They set it down pretty much right back at the one-yard line. So fourth and goal coming from the one. Yeah, you got to go for it. 22-17, a field goal. Pulls you within two. And even if you don't make it, Shepard's got a 99-yard field, and most likely you get the ball back on a punt in good field position. Here we go. Fourth down, goal to go. 
Tight wing to the right. Eye backfield. Quarterback again on the keeper. He didn't get it. He turned sideways, got spun down, landed on his butt at the one-yard line before falling backwards towards the goal line. The Rams make the defensive stop. Great stop by the Shepard defense. Altavilla didn't have it up the middle. Tried to spin and go outside the tackle. Nothing there. The ends and linebackers doing a great job sealing there. And what a defensive stop by the Shepard Rams. One they needed desperately. Now let's see if that can provide some momentum to get this offense going again. 9.31 to play in this one. Shepard started their last possession at their own four-yard line. Got all the way out to the 43 in Mercyhurst territory before eventually being turned aside and had to punt. If you're Ernie McCook and or Ty Hyatt, the offensive coordinator, you got a little riverboat gambler in you? No. There's no. the run right up the, the gut as the quarterback pushes forward. Tyson, one, Tyson Bajant getting a gain of one to the two-yard line. I think anything not a safety on this drive from this position is a success if you're the Shepherd Ram offense. And you got Devin Phelps. Take it. Take a shot. <laughs> Pistol formation. <laughs> Bajan a few yards deep in the end zone taking that shotgun snap. He is going to throw. Looking near side and nope, the catch is not made. Incomplete. That was Greg Leonard who lost his footing as he made his cut. Actually ended up with his feet sliding out from underneath of him. Went out of bounds and then went down. I was waiting to see if we got an illegal touching penalty. We did not. It was an incomplete pass. Yeah, I think he didn't get the illegal touching because he did make contact with the ball while his legs were still out of bounds. I think that's the reason that wasn't a penalty. And a little bit of gamble right there, dropping back six yards deep in the end zone to throw the football. Now a third down and nine from the two-yard line. Glover to the left of the quarterback. Bajan wants to throw, has some time. Pocket collapsing. He's coming near side, slings it out, and that is, should be a catch. Oh, no, they rule him out of bounds as Alex Wetzel made that catch along the near sideline out at the 14-yard line, and they rule him out of bounds. I don't know about that one. I think he was inbounds. I think unless we're missing something, the reason they're calling that must be because he didn't maintain possession all the way to the ground or didn't have full possession, but from our view... That's certainly looking like a catch in bounds. Uh, the Ram punting unit comes on after the incompletion. And a tough place for Noah Pohl to have to punt the football as he will have his feet right on that back line awaiting the snap. Snap is back. And the punt is out of there. Floating kick coming near side. Going to land at the 29. Take a ram bounce out to the 35. And will then be touched there. Wow. That punt's going to cover only about 32 yards. And great field position coming up for Mercyhurst with 8.29 remaining in this one. Hey, let's give it to Tyler Stern, long snapper. Got a nice snap back there to give Paul a chance to get that one out. And Paul, that... You want a good punt there. You'd love one of those 50 or 60 yard of booms from the right leg. But at that point, you just want to get the ball out and make sure it's not blocked in the end zone. The Rams have to defend a short field yet again. They just finished making a goal line stand. Now they need to come up with that turnover. Matt, does this look similar to something we've seen, I don't know, a week ago? High backfield behind the quarterback. Altavilla out from under center. Play action pass, wants to throw, in trouble, and down he goes. Oh, what an effort by the Ram defensive lineman to dive in there and get him. That's Nasheed Bridgman who brings him down. I'm assuming that's who it is. Bridgman in 98 listed as an O lineman on our roster. If he's trying to make the transition, that's one way to do yeah, it. Yeah, I think you did. Nice play. That sack going to move the football back to the 41. That is minus six yards. Second down and 16. Out of the shotgun, empty backfield. Five receivers headed into the pattern. Out to Villa, far side. Let's it go too high for his intended target. That is Joe Carbone, a 6'4", 240-pound senior tight end. And the pass a little high for him. 
Third down, 16 coming from that Ram 41. Josh Klein dialing up the pressure here on defense. First and second down. Alta Villa not able to get the ball out in the calm, cool manner he has been earlier in this ball game, having to rush it. And that's caused some bad throws and a sack. From that Ram 41. They do bring Owens back into the backfield this time, so three receivers to that far side, tight end to the near side. Altavilla to throw, hits the tight end underneath. Now the Rams will just look to make that tackle and bring him down before he gets to the first down chains. Joe Carbone making that catch and gets it to the 34, and it will bring up, uh, what, fourth down about eight? What do you do here? You ball go for it. The ball at the 33-yard line. Again, you're in that in-between part of the field. And too shallow to punt and probably on the edge of too deep to try a field goal, although with this much time in the game, uh, you don't know what the kicking situation is for Mercy Harris. I have no idea what their kicker's range is. So we'll see here. Fourth down, about eight yards to go for a first down from the Ram 33. Out to Villa, out from under center. Controlled roll, near side throws, and the catch made at the 20-yard line. It'll be a Mercyhurst first down as Clay Waldron pulled that one in in front of the Ram defensive back, Tim Womack, who made the tackle. 13 yards on the pass completion. Big conversion for Mercyhurst. The receivers knew where the sticks were. Nobody taking a route that was in front of the sticks. And Altaville on that controlled roll, he's throwing better on the run as this game is going on. First down and 10 after the pass completion. He's up to 205 passing yards. Out to Villa, out from under center. Play action pass, getting it to his fullback, and Chris Lane read that one coming, tracks him down, and grabs Dustin Schof and throws him down at the 19, a gain of only a yard. Boy, that's a great play. Read that one all the way. 13 completions, 20 attempts, 206 yards for Out to Villa who today became the all-time leading passer in Mercyhurst history. And what was his reward for that? Take a seat on the bench for two quarters. But Still would love to know what the, yeah. what the explanation on that is. Offset eye backfield behind the quarterback. Handoff Owens got an opening right at the line of scrimmage. Quickly got into that secondary where he is grabbed, picked up, and brought down by the Ram defender. That's a big run in a big situation by the lead running back, Owens. Well, you got to credit Shepard's defense. That's only the second real burst we've seen from him today. Everything else has been one or two yards here or there, but really only two, maybe three runs that have gone for more than six yards. Yeah, I've got him only at 25 yards on 13 carries today after running for 117 last week. 5-10 on a running fourth quarter clock, third down and two from the Ram. 12-yard line. Out to Villa, out from under center. Hands it off. Owens met in the hole. Turned sideways and didn't get it. He got one yard down to the 11, and now decision time again you go for, it. for Mercy Hurst. You go for it. At this point in the game, you go for it. They are now just 2 of 13 on third down conversions. That's the unofficial number. They are 1 of 2 on fourth down conversions. They will face a fourth down and 1 here. They didn't get it on a fourth and goal at the one at the 9.31 mark. Got it earlier in this drive on a 13-yard pass play on a fourth down and eight at the Ram 33. And now they face a fourth down and one at the Shepard 11. If I'm Mercyhurst here, I may take a gamble. I may line everybody up tight and try bootleg. They quickly rush to the line of scrimmage. Out to Villa, out from under center. Play action pass. Rolling near side. Going to let it go. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Great defense by the Ram defender. Number 12, that's going to be Hassan Marshall. And Marshall has made back-to-back -back very good plays. And if you're Mercyhurst, you've got to stop listening to me on fourth down. I told them they need to do the quarterback sneak that got stopped on the one-yard line. And I, that's exactly what I would have done in that situation. I line one receiver up, and there Shepard's expecting the run. But you hit him with the play-action bootleg uh, to this near side. And back-to-back -back fourth down stops for Shepard with 4-10 left in the ball game. Can Shepard's offense put together a four-minute drive? Even if you don't score, just find a way to hold on to the football and have a drive and have a established drive for the first time in the second half. They've got it from their own 11-yard line. Pistol formation as Bajan takes that shotgun snap, slings it out near side, and Devin Phelps drops it. 
Uh, one that just, uh, again, I think you're, you're trying to run before you catch the football. 32 of 49 passing, 369 yards, a couple of touchdowns, a pick on the day for Tyson Bajant. I get you're still trying to move up field. Run the ball. you got to take time off the clock. You have the lead. 4.07 left in this ball game. You have a five-point lead. Run the football. On second down and 10. From their own 11, Bajan again is going to throw, dumps it off underneath. That's Greg Leonard heading to the far side, finds a little bit of a cutback lane as he came to a stop, let the defender go by, moves upfield out to about the 18-yard line. Pickup of seven and a makeable third and three. Just a good little underneath route by Greg Leonard. Nothing fancy. Makes the catch, makes sure he hauls it in, watches it all the way to the chest. And the clock is ticking now under four minutes, 340. And County here in the fourth quarter. Shepard, the 22-17 lead. Big play here. Third and three from the 18. There is the snap in Bajan to throw. Has some time. Let's it go. And Alex Wetzel leaps into the air at the 35-yard line. Outside the numbers on the far side of the field. Comes down on his back at the 38. That's 20 yards and a ram first down. Corbin Kessler just not able to keep up with Wetzel. We've seen that a couple times here in the second half. Bajan and Wetzel able to connect on that one. We've seen some speed from Wetzel today. Able to yep. get by that second level of defenders. I've got the Rams now at 24. First downs on the day, none bigger than that one. From their own 38 on a first down and 10. As that clock moves under three minutes. Just one timeout, by the way, left for Mercyhurst. Remember, they burned two, one defensively earlier in the half. Got to run the football here. Even if you don't gain anything, got to run the football. Ty Hebron out there. Nope, it's the run pass option with a pass coming near side. Greg Leonard put a hand down, maintained his balance, and down the near sideline gets inside the 40 into the Mercyhurst, let's see, 36-yard line. Good throw, good catch, good movement by Greg Leonard. 26 yards on that pass completion. Another Ram first down, little run pass option. He put yeah. it in the belly of Hebron, but then pulled it right back out. Fifth play of the possession coming. Now in Mercyhurst territory. First down and 10 from the Laker 36. Ronnie Brown back in at tailback with the power pistol to this near side. The fullback McCook in. Two minutes, eight seconds. On that game clock, play clock down to five, down to four, down to three. There's the snap and the handoff. That's Brown, the running back, who gets met, driven backwards and taken down. Uh, you got to give credit to Gerard Gregory. He's listed as a 6'2", 270-pound junior defensive lineman. He got in there and helped to push him backwards. Mark it back to the 41. That'll be a loss of five yards. First carry of the second half for Brown who had two carries for 17 yards in that first half. Now from the 41-yard line, sixth play of the possession. Second down, 15. Rams again, letting that time run down. 123 in counting. Seven seconds on that play clock, down to five, down to four. There is the snap. Bajan has some time now, flush from the pocket, rolling far side, lets it go. Catch made on that far sideline by Dudney, but they're going to rule that he was out of bounds as he brought it in. Wow. It's a good throw by Bajan and Dudney. Nice job to reach out and make the grab, but I know you're shaking your head. Clock that's, a, that's a timeout for Mercyhurst. You just gave them another timeout. I get that last play to Ronnie Brown lost yards with one timeout. And two plays left that Mercyhurst need to call a timeout. If you run the football there, they're going to have about 35 seconds left, maybe even less, when they get the football back and no timeouts. I just, to me, you got to run the football. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Bajan will throw on a third down and 15. Pass near side. Caught Dylan Brewer inside the 30. They'll mark his progress, it looks like, at the 27-yard line. That gained good for 14 yards, but that will be about a yard short of what he needed for the first down. With a minute and two left, Marcy Hurst going to take their final timeout of this game. And with the ball at the 32-yard line, I think you punt it. I, I, you got to punt it inside the 10. No, you don't. You're going for it. Go on. Look, your chances of punting this football into the end zone from here are great, which means you're only going to gain about six yards anyway, seven yards anyway, if it comes out to the 20-yard line. You've got a chance to put the dagger in an opponent right now. You've got to go for that chance. 
the way that Paul was punted today, I'm thinking you did. You barely put anything on it and sky it inside the 10. Your, your front men are going to get down there quick. I, I, I don't know. I, I see where you're coming from. I'm not saying it's a bad shot. If this were me, I think I'm pooching this, trying to get it inside the 10. No way, man. I'm going for it, trying to get that first down, and then run out the clock. Shepard is 0 for 1 on a fourth down earlier in this game. That was with 117 left all the way back in the third quarter, and uh, that was a fourth down and eight, and they threw an incomplete pass. This, a fourth down and one from the 27 of Mercyhurst. Out of the Mercyhurst timeout, they have no timeouts remaining. This is the ball game right here. A Ram first down, and they run out the clock and win by five. Pistol formation. Deontay Glover behind the quarterback. Blitz is coming. That's a and false start. Wait a minute. Now, DJ Cornish is pointing that the defender is the one That's who crossed over and... Yeah, the whole Ram offensive line is upset at that scenario, and now we have an official from the far side who's going to come in and get involved in the conversation. I know that defensive end or outside linebacker came in, but I don't. I think Cornish was the first one to move. We'll see a conversation going on here, and it looks like it is going to be an offsides. There it is, encroachment on the defense you could see one of those ram linemen number 65 eric ostro who was pointing over to the ram sideline going it's offsides it's offside as he was listening to the discussion and that five yard penalty will give the rams the first down and a chance now to run out the clock 102 remaining in this one with the football now down to the 22 yard line first and 10 and Bajan under center going to drop back and drop to a knee I need one more of those from the victory formation and Shepard is going to improve to one and one on the season and what was another a heart race of a ball game yeah Five penalties, 40 yards in this ballgame unofficially against Mercy Hurst, but none bigger than that one right at the end with 102 left. The offside penalty allowing the Rams the chance to run out the clock. Down to 13, 12, 11, 10 on the play clock. Bajan again is under center, will drop back and drop to a knee. And players will begin to shake hands after this one. Wow, what a hard-fought game this was today. The Shepherd Rams make that five-plus-hour journey and will go home with a victory now 2-0 all-time against Mercyhurst with both of those wins coming here. They ran away with it with a great second half back in 2010. Here in 2019, they really hold on for a five-point victory. It is a final now as the Rams get the win over Mercyhurst 22-17. We'll come back and tell you all about it as we get into our post game show. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10. If you hang the WV Medicine sign, it certainly has helped take us to another level. He literally, literally saved my life. It's just mind-boggling to me that he was able to do what he did. We're able to affect much more of a difference for our patients with these resources. Having people treated locally uh, enhances their overall care. They treat you great, and they're down to earth in the West Virginia way that all West Virginians treat each other. Nothing goes better with football than chicken. From Pee Wee to the Big Boys to the Wing T Formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for just $9 is just what the boys need to be at their best. Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling! Rocks 12 pieces of chicken, just $9. Maytag knows extra dirty clothes need extra cleaning power. That's why the power of the extra power button makes Maytag extra powerful. Wow, dirt doesn't stand a chance against this kind of power. Get a load of this. That laundry is stacked. Not bad, huh? The Maytag Extra Power Button. More muscle to tackle the tough job.
It's the post-game show. As we recap the scoring, bring you stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV10 broadcast team. We welcome you back in to Tulio Field at Saxon Stadium. We are on the campus of Mercyhurst University in Erie, Pennsylvania, and we are getting into our postgame show brought to you by Smallwood Small Insurance, your total insurance solution. They're at 121 Administrative Drive in Martinsburg, phone 304-263-3361. Along with Matt Crawford, I'm Matt Miller. Back at the studio, our engineer, Caleb Falero. Thanks to Eric Sterick and John Alderton, our cameramen and on-site producers for today's game broadcast. Well, Matt, we get our postgame underway. Quickly recapping the scoring in this one, and when you go back to the beginning of this ball game, it was Shepard who got on the board first on Mercyhurst. First possession after a ram punt from Noah Pole pinned the Lakers at their own three. It was Chris Lane who put the big hit on Garrett Owens, forcing a fumble recovered in the end zone by Mercyhurst. That's a safety, and Shepard led two to nothing. Mercyhurst would answer their third possession of the first half, a 25-yard field goal. Capped a six-play, 20-yard, two-minute, seven drive. That field goal for Brendan Cole, and that made it a 3-2 to two Mercyhurst lead. But Shepard would respond as they put together a nine-play, 70-yard drive, three minutes, 21 seconds, and on their fourth possession of the ball game, Shepard found the end zone, a 17-yard touchdown pass from Tyson Bajan to D.J. Cornish, and uh, that made it 9-3 Shepard, and that was the score going into quarter number two. In that second quarter, sixth offensive possession for Mercyhurst. They were able to get a 13-yard touchdown pass going from their backup quarterback, Michael Lowry, to Austin Hentz, the wide receiver. That kept a six-play, 68-yard drive in two minutes and 32 seconds. That had Mercyhurst on top 10 to nine, but the Rams with 104 to play in the first half capped a three play 63 yard drive with a 35 yard scoring strike. That one went from Bajent to Devin Phelps. The extra point was no good. Our halftime score was 15 to 10. In the second half, Matt, it was all about the defense. It was Shepard who would increase the lead to 22 to 10 on their first possession of the second half, a seven play 45 yard drive. It took them three minutes and seven seconds. It was seven yards on the touchdown pass as Bajan and Cornish connected for a second time today. But that would be it offensively. The Rams would not find the end zone again, and the defense had to do the job with 4.13 to play in quarter number three. Mercyhurst got a one-yard touchdown run from the quarterback as Doug Altavilla was able to sneak it in after a 33-yard pass play that... Austin Hens thought he got into the end zone, and so did us and a whole lot of other people <laughs> when officials seemed to put the hands up, but then ultimately set it down at the one. Either way, Alta Villa got in. The extra point made it 22-17, to 17, and then down the stretch, Mercyhurst had a chance. Fourth and goal at the Ram 1 with 9.31 to play, and Shepard turned him aside. And then from the Ram 11, fourth down and one, and an incomplete pass. And the Rams able then to run out the clock at the end of the game. And you got to specify that fourth and one. It was third and one. Third and goal from the one as well. And then fourth and, then and, fourth goal, yeah. and goal from the one. So yep. not just one huge stop on a quarterback sneak, but two from right at the one-yard line. It's hard to do that once and nonetheless twice. You don't see that happen often. Josh Klein has got to be thrilled with what his defense has done in today's game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the defense uh, taking uh, the lead, if you will, in this one. At the same time, there's got to be some frustration on that Rams sideline that, you know, this offense able to, again, move the football and put up some numbers, even as they did last week, but uh, not finishing some of those drives. Yeah, you got to play complete games. And Shepard's got to work on that. Mercyhurst has got to work on that. It's still early in the season. Those things are going to come together the more you play in game situations. But I think you look at the Shepard Ram football team, that's probably their biggest Achilles heel right now is getting two or three first downs in a drive, getting over midfield. And it just seems like that 45-yard line to about the 30 
is where they stop on a lot of their drives. You just can't seem to get close to the red zone. And I think that's one thing they're going to have to work on over the next couple of weeks in practice and in the games. And Clarion's the the next place to start in the game next week. Both of these teams now one win and one loss on the season as Mercyhurst beating Lake Erie last week suffers the five-point loss today while the Rams, who suffered just a three-point loss last week, get the five-point victory today. Again, the final Shepard 22, Mercyhurst 17. We'll take a look at some of the post-game numbers when we come back on our post-game show brought to you by Smallwood Small Insurance in Martinsburg. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10. Screwdriver. Screwdriver. Pliers. Pliers. Phone. Care can be distracting. Phone. That's why our Whirlpool Smart Range lets you care smarter with control from anywhere. So life doesn't revolve around your range. Give me that Phillips screwdriver, would you, kiddo? Every day, care. I think I'll keep you around. Whirlpool. My name is Monica. I'm an elementary school teacher. My name is Mitch. I'm a graphic design specialist. We have four children. Currently, we have life and auto insurance with Erie. Our agent is helping us to move our homeowner's insurance to Erie as well. They've always been a good company and good customer service. If anything ever happens to me, my family will be protected. Your local area agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. Four passing attempts today. He is His right arm is going to be sore after this one. 36 for 54, three touchdowns, 438 yards, a 67% completion percentage, and one interception, that one early in the ballgame. Here comes the fun. The receiving totals. Devin Phelps won whale of a game. Eight receptions, 153 yards, one touchdown. For Dylan Brewer, didn't find the end zone, but he had a whale of a game as well. More of the short to intermediate routes where Devin Phelps was going over the top. It's an awesome one-two combination. 11 receptions for Dylan Brewer, 110 yards. Again, didn't get into the end zone. DJ Cornish added 51 yards on four receptions he would find the end zone twice. Rushing the ball, and not a great day rushing the football for the Shepherd Rams. Really didn't get it established for Deontay Glover. 16 rushes for 35 yards, and for Ty Hebron, he ran the ball just four times. I thought he ran the ball a little <laughs> bit more than that. I knew it wasn't an awful lot, but four rushes for 20 yards on the day. Looking at the Mercyhurst offense, off of Villa. Finished 13 for 21, 205 yards. And Lowry finished 7 for 14 for 106 yards and one touchdown. Hence finished with six receptions for 111 yards. Waldron finished with five receptions for 96 yards. Rushing the ball, Owens. Shepard did a good job of keeping him in line. Yeah. I mean, the guy who rushed 30 times for 125 yards last week, ran the ball 14 times for just 26 yards yards in this ball game, just 1.9 a carry. So Shepard, a good job in that front seven, which was a key to this game. Yeah, absolutely. And it's time for us to get into our electrifying play of the game. And I know exactly where I am going with this one. I am going to see if you are in agreement. But to me, the electrifying play of the game is really two plays, and you've already hit on it. The fact that they stopped this Mercyhurst team with just a five-point lead. The Ram defense held on on a third and goal from the one and a fourth and goal from the one. And each time brought the quarterback down on that quarterback sneak. Oh, easily. Yeah, that's that's not a question. Those the two were plays of the game, electrifying plays of the game, plays of the season so far. Yeah. Could end up being plays of the season at the end of this season. So, yeah, no question about it. Those are our electrifying plays of the game. 
The electrifying play of the game brought to you by Orsini's Appliance in Martinsburg, offering top names in kitchen and laundry appliances like Amana, Maytag, Jan Air, KitchenAid, and Whirlpool. And for you grill masters, Traeger Wood Fired Grills. Find out online more at Orsini's.com. All right, one final timeout. We come back and wrap it up as we take a look at some other scores around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference today. We will also look ahead to what's next for both of these teams and our next broadcast as we put the finishing touches on the postgame show brought to you by Smallwood Small Insurance. The final today from here at Mercyhurst, it is Shepard with the win over the Lakers, 22-17. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price. And we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it. Period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Nothing goes better with football than chicken. From Pee Wee to the big boys to the wing T formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for just $9 is just what the boys need to be at their best. Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Omaha! Omaha! Rocks 12 pieces of chicken, just $9. Back one final time today here at Saxon Stadium on the campus of Mercy, Hearst University, wrapping up our Smallwood and Small Insurance postgame show. We have taken a look at the numbers from this one coming up. We'll conclude with our player of the game, but right now, let's see what else is going on around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Well, we'll just go top to bottom again. Gave some of these finals in the halftime show, but in case you stepped away or weren't here for the halftime break, it was Bloomsburg taking on Edinburgh, Bloomsburg gets a three-point win, 24-21. Westchester all over Gannon, 48-14. IUP shutting out Millersville, 54-0. Kutztown beating Cal U by a touchdown, 35-28. Lockhaven at Clarion, all Clarion, 48-20. The Seton Hill taking on East Stroudsburg. East Stroudsburg gets the win on the road, 31-18. Again, our final here today, 22-17, and one game just kicked off between Shippensburg and Slippery Rock. There you go, scores from around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference, including ours here, Shepard, the win at Mercyhurst, 22 to 17. So it is time for us to take a look at uh, our player of the game brought to you by Hagerstown Ford, changing the car buying experience. Find out more online at fordofhagerstown.com or stop by 1714 Massey Boulevard in Hagerstown. I think we've got players of the game today, a couple of big games for wideouts. Yeah, Devin Phelps and Dylan Brewer. I mean, both of them. Again, we talked about it, the one-two punch. Dylan Brewer more of the short-to-intermediate route runner. Devin Phelps, while he can do that on receiver screens or the short-to-intermediate routes, he's got the speed, and he can kill you deep. We saw that today. We saw it last week. So I think both those guys are going to be a handful for the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference this year and any opponent they play. So I think those guys get our players of the game today. Again, brought to you by Hagerstown Ford. Phone 301-329-6109 or find them online at FordofHagerstown.com. We wrap up our Smallwood Small Insurance postgame show as we... Look ahead to our next broadcast. First of all, for Mercyhurst, you mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, at Bloomsburg, that's a 2 p.m. kick next week before Mercyhurst will return home to face IUP on the 28th of September. Meanwhile, for Shepard, back out on the road at Clarion next week for a 1 o'clock kick before the Rams return home again to Rams Stadium on September 28th to enter.
entertain Kutchtown. Clarion had a big win last week in their opener, so anxious to see how the Rams do again on the road next week. Yeah, looking forward to it. Again, it'll be a 2.30 or a 12.30 a pregame, a 1 o'clock kickoff on WRNR TV on YouTube and TV 10, Comcast Cable Channel 10 in Berkeley and Jefferson County. That's going to wrap it up for us here today. Special thanks to all of the staff and the folks here at Mercyhurst University and at uh, Tolio Field at Saxon Stadium for their help, their support, their hospitality with our broadcast today. Thanks to each of our sponsors supporting our coverage of Ram football. We thank you for joining us at TV10 and WRNR-TV on YouTube. We want to uh, say thank you as well to uh, Eric Sterick and to John Alderton, our cameraman and on-site producer to Caleb Falero back at the studio for Matt Crawford. I'm Matt Miller reminding you our final score today. Oh, it was a tight one, but Shepard gets the win. They beat Mercyhurst by a final of 22-17. to Until next week, so long, everyone. You've been watching play-by-play coverage of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd University Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's telecast has been brought to you by Hagerstown Ford. We deliver to your home. Ford of Hagerstown.com. Panhandle Dumpsters, because you have a choice. PanhandleDumpsters.com. The Marius Group. Start planning for a brilliant future. The Joe Ferretti Law Office in downtown Martinsburg, delivering first-rate service and results for our clients. Green Tree Realty, a great place to call home. Jackie Lewis broker greentreerealty.com mike folk for governor accountable ethical responsible folk for wv.com and by smallwood and small an eerie affiliate total insurance solutions tv 10 sports thanks you for watching today's presentation of shepherd university rams football all rights reserved